All righty. Hello, 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 folks. <laughs> I hope everybody is having a good day. There is no countdown today. We are just hopping on right away. We are live. Um, and we're just going to hang out for a few minutes. <laughs> hey, rascal. <clears throat> good to see you. We are hopping on live right away today just because uh, I am expecting a raid from Leon after just a few minutes. So we're just going to hang out. Um, going to make sure my audio sounds good. I've got Leon's stream going in my other ear here. Uh, so I can hopefully be prepared for the, two, the tsunami of people that are going to show up here in a bit. So go head over to Leon's stream for the first few minutes. Um, thank you for the confirmation there, Rascal. All right. Feel free to head over to Leon's stream first, though. Don't want to get things confused. Uh, head over there first, and he's going to raid me. So you're not going to miss anything. Don't worry. We're just going to hang out here and chat for a few minutes. Um, and then oh, Leon's just gone live. So I'm going to get in there. So yeah, head over to Leon's stream for a bit, and then raid me. And we're going to have a good evening together. <laughs> Thank you, Madeline. Thank you. <laughs> Artifice, I'm glad you're excited about this. Today it seems a sequel day. Yeah, yeah. Get on over to Leon's stream first, though. Head on over to Leon's channel. I think he's going to be raffling some stuff. <laughs> oh, thank you, Big League. Yeah, we're just going to hang out and have a bit of a conversation for a little bit until Leon decides to raid, so... Feel free to ask me anything while we're waiting. <laughs> oh, thank you, Makro. Thank you for all the follows, folks. Yeah, meet back up over here in a few. Hey, Parasocial. Where's Leon? Ah, oh, well, you are in for a treat, my friend. Or, or who's Leon? Um, you're in for a treat, my friend. Head over to Learn with Leon um, on Twitch. Yeah, head over there for a few minutes, and then they're going to raid back here. I'm doing fine constantly. Thank you. Hey, Ah Chang. Yeah, head over to Leon's stream, that channel that you linked there. Head over there first, um, and then he's going to raid me in a few minutes. Uh, no, Leon is has his starting now screen up, so he should be starting shortly. Yeah, Leon just went live. Still got his, his starting soon stream, but there's chill beats in my headphones, so that means that uh, should be starting soon. Yeah, just give it a few minutes or a minute or two. <laughs> Yeah, Leon always has nice chill beats. Uh, Madeline, uh, Madeline asked, do I have an estimated schedule for the evening? Um, as far as schedule, do you mean like uh, how long it's going to take? How long I'm going to be talking for? I know you have to wait 30 seconds because I have slow mode on. That's in anticipation. Ah, yes. So Madeline, I, I'll, I'll talk about this as soon as the raid arrives, but um, what we're going to be doing tonight is um, first just an overview about the basics of what SQL is, what relational databases are, how they're different than MongoDB, uh, and then we'll move into Supabase, which is a cloud-hosted uh, SQL um, place where you can set up you know, SQL databases and tables in the cloud, and we'll do some practice queries there. Uh, and then... If there's time after that, we'll move on to actually building an app with a, with a super base backend. Um, so doing building functions that can then do the same type of queries we did um, in basic SQL. Super, 
face, super face. Yeah. No, I've had that song stuck in my entire head. The, the, in my head, the whole time I've been preparing this lecture for tonight. It's just it's that super bass song. Yeah, or either that or, or, I, or uh, that video game, uh, Super Hot, the one with the slow-mo. Okay, Leon is starting. So if you're just hanging out in my stream just because I'm the one talking, go over to Leon's stream right now. And then you'll be back here in a few minutes. It's all good. Yeah, we got the yes coming in. I hear him in my headphones. Get on over there. Don't worry, you'll be back. Forgot how much I've missed that theme song. Hey, Fidesha. We're just kind of chilling out here for a few minutes. We're gonna we're waiting on a raid from Leon after about 10 minutes or so. See you soon, Segura. Oh, thank you, New Horizons. Yeah, I did move my stream up by a couple of days. Um, so we'll see how it goes. It'll be fine. Yeah, get over to Leon's channel. We get, we get, he's got the yuzz going again. He did a reboot, or a repeat of the yuzz. <laughs> yeah, indeed, Big Suggs. I'll see you soon. So Leon's excited for tonight. I'm excited. I got just wrapped up listening to his excitement. Making you, you don't got to stay in two streams at the same time, Unicorn. I promise, Leon's going to raid me. You're not going to lose, you're not going to miss anything. Believe me, I can't say anything competent while I'm also listening to Leon in my ear. I just, <laughs> you're not going to miss anything. You gotta trust me, Unicorn. Come on. Leon's talking about uh, all the wonderful potential merch and, and uh, or rewards that you get for completing 100 devs. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. The stream will be recorded. It'll be on Twitch for 60 days and I'll move it to YouTube like I do my other streams. Exclamation point YouTube if you want to link to my YouTube channel. So yeah, you'll be able to come and come back and watch this Postgres stream anytime you would like to. Um, and you can catch all my previous streams on YouTube. I still see 30 pe 38 people hanging out in here. If you're in 100 devs, get over to Leon's channel right now. If you're not, then you're welcome to stick around. <laughs> no worries, Big Suggs. Thank you, though. Y'all are silly. Watching dual streams. Ooh, Leon's talking about the job board. Better get over there and listen. You just get to sit here and watch me drink tea. Ooh, job hunt boot camp in January. Go get. Jobuary. Yeah, y'all should be going to stand up if you're not. Um, it's a party in there. Ooh, do you want to be involved in 100 maintainers? Tune in tomorrow. Not on my stream. With Leon. Hey, Carsis. 
we're just waiting on a uh, we're waiting on a raid from Leon, so we're just hanging out here a little bit. I got Leon's stream going in my ear. We're gonna get a raid here in a few minutes. <laughs> hey, Scotty, don't worry, you haven't missed anything. We're just hanging out. We're waiting on the raid. It's all good. We're just chilling for a minute. Ooh, surveys coming out tomorrow for those in hunter devs. Be sure you fill those out. <laughs> Thanks, Zena. Hey, C Films. We're just hanging out, waiting on Leon's raid. Sponsored stream on Thursday, Microsoft. Not, not on my channel, on Leon's channel. Leon's doing a sponsored stream on Thursday, sponsored by Microsoft. Git and GitHub. This? <laughs> it is cozy as heck. I call it my Muppet sweater because it's fuzzy. Muppet sweater, fuzzy, very warm. Oh, thank you, Hog. <laughs> it's the best logo, a f uh, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was generated by the best free logo generators. So it's the highest quality. All right, on Thursday, be sure to tune in to uh, Leon's sponsored stream, sponsored by Microsoft. Um, he doesn't monetize any of his content, neither do I. Um, and so anytime any of us gets a sponsorship, please tune in, it does help. Um, so tune in to Leon on Thursday, same time, 6.30 p.m. ET. Um, that really does, that really will help out. Excuse me. Don't know if you want to learn SQL from me when I can't even drink tea properly. Thank you for the follow, Sawasti. I appreciate it.
Yeah, Rav Robert, head on over to Leon's channel right now. Go on over there. You're not going to miss anything, I promise. Head over to Leon's channel right now, and he's going to raid me in just a few minutes. So get on over there. Get out of my chat. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but get on over to Leon's channel and listen to Leon's stream. And then you'll, then you'll just ride the raid back over. And if you don't know, if you're listening to this and you don't know what the flip I'm talking about when I say Leon, do exclamation point Leon in chat. I'll shall do it for you. Leon in chat. Check out the, the Twitch. Check out the website. Check out the Discord. It's worth your time, I promise, if you are interested in becoming a software engineer or getting a job in tech. Yeah, Chris Antigo. I'm absolutely waiting backstage in the wings. <laughs> Ooh, Leon's doing a raffle. Get out of here. Get, go get the raffle. Go do it. Yeah, Chris Antigo, I'm the guest speaker. You still got a little bit to get into the raffle on Leon's channel. Learn with Leon, twitch.tv slash learn with Leon. Get in there, get you a hundred devs investor mug. Well, don't worry. You're going to have more opportunities to win. Hint, hint.
All right, raids incoming, folks. Hold on to your butts. Hey, piece of shoot. Thank you, Dia. Hey, 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 Kuwabra. Kuwabara, sorry. All right. Headphones off. Let's get ready to rumble, folks. They're in the trees. <laughs> yeah, once the raid gets here, we're going to do a raffle. Hey, woo! <laughs> welcome, Raiders. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, folks. Get on in here. How is everyone doing to today? How's your day going? Thank you so much for the subs. They're coming in faster than I can. Uh, <laughs> they're coming in faster than I can read them. Oh man! Thank you, Leon. Thank you for the sub. <laughs> Thank you for the resub, Ting Mister. I hope everybody is doing well. Gonna give folks a minute to get in here. Leon, wow, thank you for the gifted subs. Thank you so much. Gonna give folks a minute to get in here and then we will do our first raffle of the evening um, because there's gonna be more than one. Don't you worry. Ah, if you're wondering what SQL stands for, don't worry about that either. We're going to we're going to be starting from basics here, folks. I saw a couple people asking about um, you know, in Leon's chat asking, "Oh, should I go back and watch Mayan's first SQL stream first? The, their other intro to SQL stream." Nope. Don't got to do that. We're starting from fundamentals here, but if you've seen the previous stream, don't worry. We will have new content this evening as well. We're going to work with Supabase. Um, we are going to be doing more query practice. We're going to learn how to if there's time, we're going to also learn how to set up um, a full stack app using a SQL database as the back end. So <laughs> thanks so much, folks. Looks like everybody's in here. So let's go ahead and do our first raffle without much more ado. So let me get that set up for you in one moment. Uh, there's also captions available, just like there is on Leon's channel. So um, you can turn those on by hovering over to the right side of the screen and turning on captions there. All right. Now, nobody used the keyword yet, but I think we'll start out probably by off, uh, by raffling off one of the mugs. 
Um, I believe I have two mugs and a tote at my disposal this evening to raffle off. So we'll start out with one of the mugs um, and I will start the giveaway. Um, not yet. Don't, don't do that. Guys, wait up, wait up. I haven't opened the giveaway yet, folks. Then you got to wait for 30 seconds before you can enter. <laughs> hang on, hang on. So when I start the giveaway, I will tell you when it started. Then you can type exclamation point raffle in chat. Not yet. Um, and then you'll have plenty of time to enter the giveaway. We'll keep that open for a couple minutes um, while I give some introduction, and then we will pick a winner. Okay. So I am starting the raffle, opening the raffle now. All right, giveaway has been opened. Yep, type raffle in chat, you'll get your entry. I can see the entries coming in. Holy cannoli. <laughs> That's a lot of entries. All right, so while y'all are doing that, like I said, we'll leave it open for, we'll leave it open for about four more minutes. Um, while y'all are doing that, tonight we are going to learn about SQL or SQL, depending on how you want to say it. Um, so I'm going to teach you all about what it is, what it's for, how relational databases are different than MongoDB. Um, and then we're going to apply it, like I said. Um, and I think Leon gave you some background already, but if you're just joining us now, uh, I am a SQL developer in my day job. I am a backend SQL developer. I work with backend data only. Um, so exploring SQL in the web dev space is a little bit new to me. However, um, I think you'll find that there's tools out there that make it very easy. Uh, and the principles of SQL are pretty universal. So uh, it's a great language. It's applied everywhere. You'll find it everywhere. You'll find it on job interviews. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a great language to know, like Leon said. Um, so once chat slows down here a little bit, entries are still coming in. <laughs> so once chat slows down here a little bit, I do want to ask you the question. Um, as Leon mentioned, you know, so you find SQL on a lot of job postings. Um, of the folks in chat, those of you who are currently looking for, um, you know, interviews, who are talking to recruiters, um, who are, you know, really in the job hunt at all, or even aware of job postings, how many of you have seen SQL listed on um, a job posting as something that would be nice to have, or had a recruiter tell you it would be nice to have? Um, <laughs> everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So many of you have. Yes. Yeah. And I will tell you, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> Australia. Yeah. One in th uh, one out of three postings. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, ah, you have in my current workplace, your current workplace uses SQL. Okay. Yeah. And the thing is, in order to put SQL on your resume, you don't have to know, you don't have to be an expert at it. Um, it's really easy to pick up the basics. Um, it's written like plain English, as you'll see. Um, and so, yeah, it's really easy to pick up the basics. And that's how my career got started. Uh, I learned a little bit of SQL just for an unrelated role. <laughs> of course, I, as soon as I learned like two, two things in SQL, I put it on my resume. And that is what got my foot in the door um, for the rest of my career. And now I, I've built, I have built my career on knowing nothing but SQL. Before I started 100 devs, I was already a developer, a senior developer. And all I knew was SQL, didn't know anything else. Now, of course, I know, you know, JavaScript and all those other things, but my career was built on SQL and only SQL. So uh, again, it's a great thing to know. All right, I think we're about one minute away from closing the raffle. So if you haven't entered, please do. We'll close it here shortly. <laughs> Ah, your current job uses SQL. Uh, somebody asked, is SQL easier than JavaScript? Well, everything is relative, but I think you'll find, as I mentioned before, that SQL is structured a lot like plain English. You'll, you'll, when, you, when you start reading and writing it, you'll notice it looks a lot like sentences, and there's a reason for that. Um, there's, a, there's a reason for that, and it has to do with how old the language is, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, if we don't know the back end stuff, will learning SQL now be too difficult? 
I wouldn't say so. I, um, when I started learning SQL, I didn't know anything about what a database was. Um, I think it's not, it wouldn't be a bad idea just to sit and observe. You don't have to participate. Um, you don't have to do any hands-on if you don't want to. You can sit and observe, get a feel for the syntax, and see if it's something you might be interested in. All right, we are at doing SQL before coding. No, SQL is coding. <laughs> All right, I think we, it is that time now, folks. Time to draw. I'm going to close the giveaway. All right, giveaway is closed. Giveaway is closed. And we're going to go ahead and draw a winner. And I will share that winner um, on screen once we have it. Actually, I'll, I think I can announce it in chat. So I'm going to go ahead and draw somebody. What if Leon wins the raffle? <laughs> then we'll do a redraw. It's fine. All right. So the winner is Jardo J. And I have, I'm announcing, spamming that in chat. Jardo J. Congratulations. Um, you have won the raffle, my friend. If you didn't win, no worries. If you didn't win, no worries. We are going to have two more draws this evening, um, probably around uh, either just before or after breaks at some point, uh, depending on just the flow of things this evening. So congratulations, Jardo Jeg. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> you articulated his stream loads. Thanks you. No worries, Jardo. Congrats on the mug. And we have one more mug and a tote bag to raffle off a little bit later in the evening. All right. So with that out of the way, I think it is time to learn about some SQL. And I think my fall, I think my follower uh, uh, like badge thing is broken. I think y'all broke it. <laughs> so many follows. Thank you again. But I think it's broken. <laughs> Uh, yep, my RAM is on fire. So thank you all. All right, let's get into it, shall we? How about we go to the slides? All right, let me get this going here. Okay, there we go. Slides are up. Hopefully everybody can see those. And um, if you want a link to those slides, that should work. I've just spammed it in chat. Some folks are asking for the link there in chat. Um, should be able to find them there. <laughs> yeah, Postgres versus SQL. Don't worry. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about what Postgres is, what SQL is, what it's for. So um, I might have to. <laughs> I might have to uh, disable my follower overlay. We'll see if it gets in the way. Um, all right, here we go. So intro to Postgres. Um, what is, and usually people's first question is, what does SQL stand for? When we say Postgres SQL, what does SQL stand for? Well, SQL is Structured Query Language. Um, and when we talk about queries, what we mean by queries is we mean talking to a database. So st a structured language for talking to a database. <laughs> yes. Oh, we got a hydrate there. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right. There's another link to the slides. Another round. OK. Thank you for the yes. <laughs> Yeah, so you might get, um, yeah, this could be a question in an interview. Who knows? Somebody might ask you, what does SQL stand for? And you can tell them structured query language. Okay. So what does that mean? What is Postgres? Um, so it is an open source flavor or, or variation of structured query language SQL. Um, so what you'll find with, with many programming languages, there will be, it'll start out with one version or you know the, the inception version of the language. And then people will immediately start branching off and making their own versions or corporations will, uh, will license the standard or something like that and, and build their own corporate version of the language. You'll find that a lot. Um, but Postgres is specifically the open source version of SQL. Um, and I will be calling it SQL, not SQL. 
uh, you know, you can call it SQL if you want, but I'm calling it SQL. So just putting that out there, not saying one's better or worse, but uh, as you can see in the little cartoon here at the bottom, there is some debate. <laughs> squirrel, or just call it squirrel. That's fine too. Yes. <laughs> Team SQL. All right, go for it. Yeah. So next point is might seem obvious, but I just want to clear this up right at, right out the gate. SQL is not JavaScript. We're talking about an actual different language here. Um, it has, it was developed separately from JavaScript. It's actually much older than JavaScript SQL is. Um, and what it does is it allows you to talk directly to a relational database and perform CRUD operations. There's a lot more you can do, but probably from a web development perspective, the fact that you can do CRUD, um, which stands for what? CRUD is what? I know y'all know. <laughs> Create, read, update, delete. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Create, read, update, delete. Indeed. Yeah. So with SQL, you can do those things, those things that you're used to doing with Mongoose or your favorite way of interacting with MongoDB. All of those things you can do with SQL against a relational database. Now you might be like, uh-oh, what the heck is a relational database? Don't worry, we're gonna talk about it. Um, and Postgres specifically has been in constant development since 1986. So it's an oldie. Now wait till I tell you that how old the actual base SQL language standard is. It's older than that. So we're talking about a veteran of the programming language ecosystem right here. <laughs> it has family, it does, yeah. See, so when anything is that old, like, like when you get an old language like SQL is, you're gonna get branches, you're gonna get variants, you're gonna get everybody thinking that they can build a better version of it, right? Um, and so, like I say, Postgres is just one of the versions of SQL, but it is open source and it's free. So in the philosophy of 100 devs, uh, we like things that are free everything should be free to use and build our projects with. So Postgres is your friend. <laughs> well, I'm older than SQL. Well, hang on. This is just Postgres. Postgres is 1986. Um, so, you know, you might find that you're not older than the original version, but <laughs> yes, this class. And for those of you asking, this class will be recorded. Um, it will be available on Twitch for 60 days. Um, and then it will move to YouTube along with all of my other streams. So if you're curious about, for example, my earlier SQL class, the one I did a few months ago, you can find that on my YouTube channel, which you can find at exclamation point YouTube in chat. That will give you a direct link to my YouTube channel. Feel free to check out all of my videos there. There are no ads on YouTube. So if ads drive you up the wall like they do me, um, you can watch my streams there for free or well, for free of ads, I should say, for free in general, but also free of ads. <laughs> yeah, SQL predates the internet as we know it. It absolutely does. Um, it is a legacy language that is still heavily used. Uh, folks are asking for links for the slides again. No worries. I got your back, friend. Yes, I actually pay for premium YouTube as well. <laughs> But I still don't put ads on my channel because I know folks folks shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't have to pay for premium YouTube to not be barraged with ads. All right. There was a time before. <laughs> All right. So why SQL? Why should we care? Why do we care about SQL? Uh, well, it is the OG database language. Uh, it was developed, first developed in the 70s, 1970s. And it is still widely used. Like I mentioned, I'm sure y'all believe me. Y'all have seen it on the job postings. Y'all have seen it uh, from recruiters. Y'all have seen it as a, oh, it would be great if you knew some SQL. Um, and it's what I built my whole career on today. Uh, it's what I do. That's the only thing that I work with at work every single day. Um, it is still very widely used. It is designed for, ex for um, accessing, modifying, and extracting information from relational databases. <laughs> 1974. Yeah, I didn't remember the exact date, but yes, 1974. Um, and um, as folks are mentioning in chat, yeah, the original name of the language was not just SQL. It was Structured English Query Language. 
Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what it what can what it can help you do? So using SQL, why do we care to use SQL? Well, a great thing about it, as I said before, is that it allows you to talk directly to a database, right? So you can go in to a database, get exactly what you need, tell it exactly what you want with no GUI. You are writing code that talks directly to that database and returns results directly to you. So it, there's no abstraction layer. There's no um, you know functions that you got to figure out if they do exactly what you want. No, you are telling the database exactly what you want and then getting back exactly what you need. <laughs> uh, somebody asked, should we put SQL on our resume or SQL and Postgres if we know both after this class? Um, that is up to you. Um, what you'll find, I think, is that there are multiple different flavors of SQL, but many of them are very similar to each other. So for an example, in my personal experience, I started out, um, I kind of <laughs> cut my teeth a little bit, got started early career, started in uh, Microsoft SQL. So Microsoft SQL Server, uh, that's where I learned SQL and all the syntax. And then in my very next job where I use SQL, I moved to Oracle SQL. So PL SQL, which is a different flavor of it. It was no problem for me at all to pick up Oracle SQL and learn that slightly different syntax. And then for this presentation, I'm working with Postgres. And again, it was no problem for me to switch gears and pick up this slightly different uh, flavor of SQL. Do I use PL SQL as well? Yes, I do. Yep. Because yeah, we work with, we're an Oracle shop at work. Um, not saying whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, they're all different. Um, but yes, Oracle shop at work. Uh, is it better to know two to three different flavors of SQL than all the variants? No, I think as long as you know one flavor, you'll be fine. Um, like I say, you, those skills will be translatable. Like I, I can say in my personal experience, they have been translatable when somebody says, oh, do you know SQL? You just say yes. You don't say, well, I don't know Microsoft SQL or, oh, I don't know. No, yeah, I know SQL. Yeah. And then you pick up what you don't know. <laughs> Oracle is very expensive. Yes, it is. <laughs> so Postgres on the resume is good as is. Yeah, you can put Postgres on your resume. I think Postgres is a good one to have. Um, it's kind of, it's a bit more trendy, I think, than like, you know, Oracle SQL. <laughs> Yeah, SAP uses it as well. Absolutely, I did have that on the um, I did have that on the slide originally, but I didn't want to confuse people with too many acronyms. But yes, SAP uses SQL as well. Yeah, so seven minutes said, "Darn, I did that well. I don't know this or that version." Now, just say, "Hey, yeah, I know SQL." And if they if they ask, "Oh, what what you know what flavor of SQL or what version of SQL did you use?" Then you can tell them and be honest. But you can just say, yeah, yep, I know SQL. I can write a select statement. I can write an update statement, delete statement. Um, yeah, oh, I've used, you know, I've, I've used SQL in full stack apps. Absolutely. Yeah, I tell people I know Postgres because it's open source and I don't have to pay for a license. Absolutely. That's the best part about it. <laughs> All right. One set next to a C-sharp developer on the bus, been putting it on my resume ever since. <laughs> All right, yeah, so what you'll find is that there is nothing wrong with knowing how to use MongoDB and NoSQL type databases. However, in many traditional corporate, larger corporate environments, you'll often find that SQL um, and relational databases is the data storage method of choice. Um, they are just, that's what's been around for much longer than NoSQL databases. They've just been around longer. And so legacy corporations will often have a relational database with SQL as the interface um, as their primary data storage method. So that's why it's very good to know. All right. So how does SQL work? <laughs> Is it only used for database management? That's what it was created for, is for working with databases, managing database data. Um, so SQL is a declarative language. Um, so unlike JavaScript, where you're actually writing out functions that, that you know, and building those things up from scratch of what you want to do, um, SQL has kind of a certain a set of keywords that you then put those keywords together to tell the database what you want from it but not necessarily how to do it. So you just say, hey, fetch me 
these fields from these tables with these criteria. Bring that back. Um, and the upside of that is that SQL is very easy to write, as we will see here in just a minute. We're going to do some examples. Um, it's easy to read, easy to write, because it looks like plain English. It was designed to read like plain English. If you think about it, back in the 1970s, when SQL was conceived, that was almost, what was that? It was like 50 years ago, almost exactly. Well, so 48 years ago, SQL was invented. Computers were the size of a garage back then or bigger. And they used like, you know, punch cards and, and that sort of thing. And so SQL had to be accessible to people who had never seen a computer before in their life. People who didn't know, you know, a computer from a toaster oven, right? And so SQL was designed to be readable and writable and similar to plain English. Now, there's, there are abstract things that you can do in SQL, but for the kind of things that you need for a basic level of SQL proficiency, you're going to be using the same set of keywords over and over again, and you're going to find that they read and write very similar to plain English. Yeah, and we're going to talk, don't worry, if you're wondering about the differences between SQL and NoSQL type databases, we're going to talk about that. Actually, I think it's just on the very next slide, so don't you worry. <laughs> Christoph says, was born in the 70s, feeling old right now. Uh, that is not my intention. Just technology changes so fast. But a lot of the older legacy languages, you'll find that they kind of share characteristics of using a lot of very readable English keywords. It was, it's designed to sort of ease people into the aspects of, of, of talking to a computer, right? Without making it completely inaccessible. <laughs> I think somebody asked, uh, can I just learn SQL on the job? I think that was the, I think that was the question. It, it's, it scrolled out of, out of frame too quickly. Yes, I did. I learned SQL on the job and you can too. I'm going to give you a head start tonight, um, but you can absolutely, once you know, like a couple of lines of SQL, like I did, just, I, I dropped it. On, I'm not saying you, you want to do this, but I dropped it on my resume and that's what got my foot in the door for the rest of my career. So <laughs> changes so much, but yeah, technology changes a lot, but the origin is equally important. Absolutely. Oh, Victory Lane says, it's my second day on the job and I learned SQL today. So Victory Lane, um, I bet you found it pretty easy to pick up, right? Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the question that is on everybody's mind. What is the difference between NoSQL databases, which y'all are familiar with, and relational databases, which are um, kind of the 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 original version of database tables and what we use to write SQL against. All right, so on the left is what you're probably familiar with, right? This is some data in a MongoDB collection. And in MongoDB, we store, what do we store? Okay, so, so quiz time here. In MongoDB, we have a database, and then what are what is the hierarchy inside of that database? What are the things that we have inside of a database? So it goes, you know, cluster, database, then what? Yeah, <laughs> a collection of documents, right? A collection of documents. So in this case here, we have a collection. On the left, we have a collection. And I've called this collection something like to-dos. I don't even remember. Uh, but it's a, it's a to-do list. So we can see here I've got these individual objects, which are individual to-do items. And as you all mentioned, these individual items are called documents. So in MongoDB, we have a collection which stores a bunch of documents. Now, in MongoDB, if I have a collection with a bunch of documents, do those documents necessarily have to have any relationship to each other at all? Do they have to have any relationship at all? No, they don't, right? I can take a MongoDB collection 
and put whatever the flip I want in there. I could just dump everything into one collection and it wouldn't matter. I could, they could all have different fields. They could all look different. Um, in MongoDB, what do I do if I want to lend some structure to my data? If I want to make sure that all the data I'm putting into my collection, all the documents I'm putting into my collection have the same type of structure, what do I do? Yeah, I would have to use on my server side, I would have to, in my server somewhere, I would have to build out a schema using something like Mongoose. So I would have to use kind of like this extra tool. I'd have to, okay, say, all right, Mongoose, I'm going to build out a schema um, and I'm going to do things like set whether a field is has a default value or set a data type for that field, you know, force it to be a string or a number or something like that. Because MongoDB doesn't care. Um, it doesn't care if any of these if any of these um, documents look the same, what any of their data types are. It's just going to accept them as they are. It's all inclusive. Now, obviously, there's some challenges with that, right? There's some challenges with that. So what if you want your data to have the same structure? Well, you're going to have to build out schemas every single time. If, if I've got different um, you know, servers that are, or, or apps that are talking to the same collection, all of them need to share that schema and need to have the same structure so that you don't end up with just garbage data. Yeah, MongoDB is unopinionated. It's unstructured. Now, this is where a relational database can be your friend. So let's look at what we have here on the right. Let's let's look at let's look at what we have here on the right. This is a table in a relational database. Now, I don't think that's I can move it to the left a little bit, but I think you all can still see it. Um, so on the right here, we have a relational database table. Now, the first thing that we see about it is it looks a little bit like almost like an Excel spreadsheet or something, right? We have a series of columns across the top. And then we have a series of rows going down. And each one of these rows represents one of the items on our to-do list. And the columns represents the fields. So we have our ID field. Now you'll, you'll, you'll see these are the same fields. We have ID, we have to-do, and we have completed. Yeah, and the first thing, just even if you know nothing about tables, You'll notice that it's very easy to look at, isn't it? All of our data is structured into vertical rows and columns. I can quickly scan down that table and see what's in there, see what the data looks like, see whether there's any blank fields or anything like that. And yeah, it's, it's like the world's biggest Excel spreadsheet, yeah. Um, another thing that you might notice, another thing that you might notice here is that there's this little um, int, text and bool next to these column headers. So another main difference with relational databases is that when you set up a new table to put data into it, you have to set the data type when you set the table up and it's not going to, going to allow anything to be written to that table that does not meet the data type, right? So I am not gonna be allowed to write something to this ID field that is not an integer. I'm not gonna be allowed to write something to this to-do column that is not text. And I am not gonna be allowed to write anything to this completed field. I think that's behind chat, but this is a Boolean, so it can only be true or false. Yeah, and it's what we call structured, right? It's what we call structured. Yeah, it's kind of like, and that's a good comparison. It's kind of like how TypeScript tightens up JavaScript a little bit. So here, instead of having to make sure that each of your servers and each of your apps that is talking to your database has the same schema and is passing in the same types of data, no, you're configuring that when you set up the initial table. That's when you set your data types. And so anything that talks to that table is going to have to meet the requirements of the table in order to write to it. Yeah. So it gives an error if you don't include one. No. So as long as you pass in the right type, 
then it will write it to the table. But if I tried it, so for this Boolean column here for completed, if I tried to pass in accidentally walk the dog to this Boolean column, it would not allow me to write. Yeah, strong, yeah, <laughs> data types, it's required. Yep, it's something that we haven't really worked with in JavaScript because JavaScript just allows you to do whatever the heck you want for the most part. But SQL is strict about that. It forces you to have your data types in order uh, and write things to the correct columns. And there are tons of different types in SQL. These are not the only types. I'm just keeping things very high level today. Um, but as you play around with SQL, you see there's a lot of different types. Um, and it can do really any type that you would need. Um, but I'm keeping kind of standard basic types that you're going to immediately understand and be familiar with. Yeah. All right. And when you set up your table, obviously, you know, you can you can fi configure the text length and that kind of thing. Um, you can have, you know, you can put, you can store tons of text in a field or just a few words in a field. And it just depends on how you set up your table in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, columns are fields and rows are individual records. I tend to call them records. That may, that may vary depending on tools and shops and stuff like that. But yeah, these are columns or fields and rows are records. And don't worry, we're going to see more of this. This is just a taste. This is just a taste. Um, records sound snazzy. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And just looking at SQL, it's a very organized way to look at your data, right? Um, but it's important to remember, as we're talking about SQL, I'm going to speak positively about it because I'm very familiar with SQL. However, you shouldn't get the impression that one type of, you know, that, that no SQL is better than a relational database or that relational databases are better than no SQL databases. They each have their purpose, otherwise they wouldn't exist. So keep that in mind. None is better than the other, but knowing both is what's gonna give you that leg up, right? So both have their place. Oh, we got a hydrate there. Yep. Both have their place and knowing both is going to help you go farther in your career. So, all right, let's see. I think what we'll do here is first, let's go ahead and take a break. It's time. It is break time. Um, we're going to take a break on the hour, every hour. Y'all started at 630 with Leon. Um, so we'll take a break for five minutes. And then when we come back, we're going to start looking at SQL statements. How do we actually write a, write a statement in SQL that can get data out of a database? What does that mean? How do we write a statement in SQL? Um, I think you'll find they look very similar to English, as I said before. And they allow you to, again, talk directly to a database with no middleman. Oh, post posture check, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So when we come back, actual hands-on, we're going to get some hands-on with SQL. We're going to learn about SQL statements. We're going to move to Supabase. We're going to head over to Supabase. You're going to build your own table if you want to. You'll be able to build your own table, and you'll be able to then write queries on that table. You'll insert some data into the table. Then you'll write queries on that table, do some select statements, um, do some CRUD operations on that table. And then after that, if we have time, I hope we do, we will learn how to then bring it back into our JavaScript apps and build out an app with Supabase SQL database as the back end for it. So you will, you'll actually move into the full stack realm uh, toward the end of class today. <laughs> Sounds rad. Good to hear it. All right. How long is class tonight? We are going to cut it off at three hours. So however far we get is however far we get. It could be that we have a follow-up stream another time if we don't get through everything. So we'll just see. We're just going to cruise it along. We're going to answer questions. We're just going to play it by ear and see how we do. All right. So let me get the timer pulled up here. Maybe. Come on. All righty. There's our five minute timer. So please do get up, stretch, get your wrists limbered up, roll your neck a little bit, and then come back in five minutes. And we are gonna start getting some hands on if you want to. 
We're going to start getting some hands on with SQL and build out our own table in Superbase. All right, here we go. All right, folks, we got about a minute left in the break. So go ahead and fill up your water glass, pet your dog, pet your cat, pet your significant other with their consent, um, and then come on back when you're ready. And if you didn't get up at all during the break, I see you out there. Just get up for a couple seconds if you're able and do a quick stretch. You'll feel better. <laughs> yes, Garland, I see you. Stand up. Snake from State Farm. That is a fantastic username. I freaking love it. Nico asks, do you still have foster kittens about? Uh, they actually went back to the shelter today. 
they are finally going to get their surgery and then go up for adoption. So very excited about that. Sad to see them go, but I'm excited about it. Yeah. All right. No worries, Rohan. <laughs> All right, let's get back into it, shall we? Okay, and remember, do stick around because we still have a couple more raffles to do. I think we'll probably do the next one um, at uh, 8.30. So, well, 8.30 Eastern, which is in about 45 minutes. So we're going to do another raffle and then the third one probably toward the end of the stream to, as a thank you to everybody who sticks around. Um, so we'll do another mug raffle um at um in around 45 minutes and then we'll do the last one uh the tote bag toward the end of stream so if you're excited about those if you're excited about some merch uh please do stick around it'll be good stuff uh ismail asks um have you ever tried connecting node with oracle or ms sql i have not no uh, i don't really have a background in like web development using those particular tools um but I mean, a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of, so SQL has been around for such a long time that there's so many options to interface with it um, that you can pretty much find a tool that's gonna meet your need. <laughs> and somebody asked, uh, I saw this chat come in right before, right when the break started. Um, somebody asked, can you give some more examples of when you would use NoSQL versus when you would use a relational database? So when would I use MongoDB versus when would I use relational databases? So MongoDB is great um, for stuff like when your data might not have a set structure right out of the gate, right? Maybe you're going to have field, maybe you're going to have a variable number of fields coming in. Maybe you don't know how many fields you're going to be coming in. Um, maybe your, your data is just going to be in flux or you're going to be, you want flexibility in the types of data that you can store. Um, and relational databases are great when your data does have a lot of structure or when you want to force your data to have a lot of structure. So when you know that you're going to have tons of data coming in, it's all going to have the same structure or you want to force it into the same structure and you want to be able to manipulate it and work with it quickly. Kid Solo says, what do you, uh, can you define relational database? So relational database is what you see here on the right. Relational database stores data in tables and these all of these rows exist together in a single table. So you can query them together, you can manipulate them together all at the same time in the same table. A table is a single entity in a relational database. Whereas in a NoSQL database like MongoDB, each of the documents sort of exists on its own in that collection. They have no relationship to each other. They are completely separate, their own entities. Obviously, you can pull them into your app and you can manipulate them. Like you, you can pull them into an app and you could dump them in an object or an array and manipulate them there. But in the collection itself, they're pretty separate from each other. How, however, in a SQL table, you can work with them directly in that table. You can um, group them together, you can sum them, you can do transformations on them, you can sort them, you can filter them, you can order them all within that table because they are related to each other in the same table. Yeah, and I can see there's some back and forth in the chat already about, well, this is better in, in, in SQL databases. This is better in NoSQL databases. You know, there's, you can debate for days and days about which one is better. In general, I think what you'll find is that your employer is going to use a certain database type, whether that's SQL database, no SQL database, and you'll just need to get on the bandwagon and use what they're using. Because especially as technology continues to evolve, you'll find that there's tools that can do pretty much whatever you want to do in either environment, right? There's all sorts of flexibility out there, but your employer is going to use a particular stack and you're going to have to jump on that stack and <laughs> you're going to have to jump on that train and ride it, right? You may use both. Yeah. Yeah. And you can make um, multiple tables. You can make multiple tables. You can link them together. Um, relational databases just look at data in a slightly different way. Um, so think about in MongoDB, how you can have a database with 10 or 20 collections in it, right? You can have as many collections as you want. 
And then inside of those collections, you can have as many documents as you want. Um, same with relational databases. You can have a database. It can have as many tables as you want. And inside of those tables, you can have as many records or rows as you would like. Uh, Trizit says, "Mind Wolf, do you feel the education sector is uncomfortable moving away? Is uncomfortable moving away from this type of legacy tool? I mean, this is what my employer uses. Um, they use SQL, um, but I feel I think you'll find a lot of large businesses do." Um, Yeah. So documents can be related. Yes. So in a NoSQL database, documents can be related to each other, but by default, they don't have to be right. They exist as separate objects, but you can relate them, but that's not the default. Whereas in a SQL table, by default, each of these rows exists in the same table and be, can be considered as a group in the same table. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't call SQL a legacy tool either. I agree. <laughs> it's still very much in use uh, and still extremely popular. So don't get got, don't be out there thinking, oh, oh it's a, it's a dead tool or, oh, it's a dead language. Cause it is not, believe me. Y'all said, I asked you all at the beginning, do you see SQL listed on job descriptions? And y'all are like, yeah, absolutely. So that means it's still in play. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's move on here. We'll get some practice, I promise. All right. So what does SQL look like? When we write SQL, what are we talking about? What, what does a SQL statement look like? So structure of a SQL statement. Pretty much every single basic SQL query, or when you're talking to the database, we call those queries, right? Structured query language. Every single time you're talking to the database, you're usually going to have a statement that's going to answer four questions. And those four questions are, what CRUD operation do you want to perform? So do you want to create, read, update, or delete? What table are you touching here? It's not necessarily what, what table it comes from, but what table are you working with? What columns do you want to affect? And what row filters do you want to apply? So remember, we're working with tables here and tables have rows, sorry, <laughs> rows <laughs> and columns, right? And so if you are looking to affect a section of data, you're gonna wanna triangulate the rows and the columns that you are, that you want to affect, right? You, you, wanna, you wanna figure out what those are. You wanna specify what those are so that um, the database knows what's being updated. <laughs> SQL is a legacy tool the same way the wheel is a legacy tool. Absolutely. Just because it's been around for a long time doesn't mean it's old or out of date. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So when you're writing a SQL statement, these are the four questions that you're, that you're going to want to answer. And when we talk about doing CRUD operations with SQL, just like with JavaScript or with, you know, Mongoose, it's not necessarily that we call those create, read, update, delete. They have other names, but I think you'll find that they're very intuitive and very similar. So you'll know what you'll remember what they are. So for example, create in SQL, we use a keyword called insert. For reading, we use a keyword called select. For updating, we say update. For delete, we say delete. So insert, select, update, delete. And we're going to practice these. Don't worry. I'm just introducing them for, for starters. Insert, select, update, delete. Those are your main keywords for doing basic queries and basic uh, interactions with the database. <laughs> Crab operations, <laughs> create, read, and then vanish, yeah. But no, for the purposes of SQL, we have insert, select, update, and delete. <laughs> You're fine, Trizzes, it's all good. <laughs> all right. So here's an example down here at the bottom of the screen. This is an example of a basic SQL statement. Let's see if we can figure out what it's doing. So we're saying select star from to do's where completed equals false. So let's take a look at this. The first thing we have here, well, this is specifying what CRUD operation we're performing. So what is select doing? What out in the CRUD acronym, what is select doing? Yeah, we're doing a read, right? 
we're reading some data. We want the database to show us some data. We're, we want to retrieve it and read that data, right? Yeah. Select, read. Exactly. All right, now next we have this little star. And this, is, this might look a little unusual, but essentially in SQL, you might be familiar with the star actually from like using search engines and things like that. You might have seen the star before. We call that a wild card. And what that means is just get everything. Get all. Yeah, y'all are saying it already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you've seen it in CSS. Exactly. I forgot about that. Yes, you have seen that wild card in CSS. So in CSS, what that means is just apply to everything, right? Apply that styling across the board. Apply it to everything. And it means the same in SQL. So select everything from to-dos. So this answers the second question. What table should it come from? Well, it should come from a table called to-dos. And then, well, we already said, what columns do you want to affect? That's the star. I want to get all columns, get everything, all columns. And then what row filters do I want to apply? Well, I want to apply a filter where completed equals false. So where the value of completed equals false false. What that's going to do is it's going to filter my rows down to only the ones that have a value where completed equals false. So we're going to apply that. We're going to apply that in just a minute. But again, just giving you a taste of how those sequence look. Now, um, <laughs> and command line. Yeah. So you've seen it in Unix. You've seen it in command line, all those sorts of things. Yeah. You know what the star means. Exactly. Oh, is the chat is the uh, chat overlay getting in the way? Do you all want me to take it off or make it smaller? I can make it smaller. Let me make it smaller. Two seconds. All right. There we go. Is that better? Just a little bit. I still want it to be on screen for people that watch this on YouTube later so that they can get a feel for what's being discussed in chat. Um, Hopefully that's a bit better though for you. <laughs> yes, we're gonna have a table and we're gonna get there when we move to Superbase. We're gonna have a table called to-dos and we're gonna practice some queries against that table. Yeah. Hello YouTube, indeed. All right. So this is an example of a basic query. Again, what we're doing here is we're selecting all columns. So select star, read all columns from the to-dos table where completed equals false. So I'm, I have a field called completed. We saw that in the previous, um, let me see if I can, we saw that in the previous uh, slide here. We have, a, we have this field called completed. So select star from to-dos, which is this table, where completed equals false. Now in this case, it would return all rows, right? It would return all, all four rows because they all have a value where completed equals false. Um, however, what we'll see is that when we actually start, you know, flipping values on and off, you'll, you'll get different results when you rerun that query. <laughs> yeah. All right. So questions on this before we move on. So do the commands, oh, that's a great question, Tame Mister. So do the commands have to be on separate lines like that? No. I did it this way so it's easier to to read. You'll generally in like formal when you're writing formal queries, you'll see that people do space things out on separate lines. Um, I just put it on separate lines because it's a little bit easier to look at that way. Yeah, and if you were thinking about mongoose, this would be very similar to um, db collection to dos dot find completed colon false exactly. Yeah. But I hope you can see that this is actually very clean. You don't have a lot of brackets. You don't have a lot of parentheses. It's using full English words. Um, and it seems almost too simple, right? Yeah. And we already kind of talked about this. Yeah, that's so much easier than dot notation, right? <laughs> Uh, DevD says, so what column gets selected have to be specified after the CRUD keyword? Yeah, so it's a special case for the for that wildcard selector. That just means get me all the columns. Just get me all the columns. Yeah. 
Well, we'll practice selecting individual columns once we get a little farther along. Do they need to be capitalized? So most of the time, um, SQL is, SQL used to be um, like talking about like typing the keywords and stuff like that. It used to be, you know, all caps <laughs> and people, some people still write it that way, um, but you don't have to write it all caps anymore. You can write it all lowercase. Um, most people either do all caps or all lowercase um, as far as writing their keywords. Most people, you know, you don't, most people don't do like capitalize the first letter and then write the, write the rest. Although I suppose you could. SQL is a yelling language. Yes, it is. It was written back in the seventies when everything was all caps all the time. And so, yeah, there was no lowercase allowed, but now we're in the modern day. You can write lowercase if you want. <laughs> wow, noises. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And again, um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's certain, uh, there might be certain, your employer might have certain, uh, what's the word, uh, like a style book or certain guidelines for how they want your code to look if you do write SQL for your employer. But right now we're just learning. We're, we're devs. We're writing bad code. We're baddies writing bad code, right? Don't get too wrapped up in it. We're just going to learn about the structure. We're going to figure out how these things work together. And then once you, you know, get that job, you can follow whatever style guidelines your employer sets. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we kind of talked about this already. So SQL allows you to modify data in tables directly rather than just writing queries to read data. So we talked about how you can do CRUD operations. Um, insert adds a new row or rows to the table and you'll specify the values for each field. Um, update updates an existing row or rows based on where criteria and delete deletes an existing row or rows based on where criteria. Um, so for those of you who do know a little bit about SQL, what problems could you foresee if you just say, um, let's say, let's say you just say, all right, delete star from to do's. That's how, you know, you could do a select statement that way. You could say select star from to do's and get everything back. So what do you think would happen if I said delete star from to do's? Or delete from, it would be delete from to do's technically, but let's not get into that yet. Yeah, you could delete everything, right? So just like just like with Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. That's one thing that SQL is very good at is doing a lot of work with very few keywords. So yes, just like where you could select star from a table, you could also delete everything just as easily. Yeah, but we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to write a statement that answers those four questions we talked about before um, so that you can be careful and not accidentally delete everything from your table. <laughs> everything is gone. Yeah. <laughs> is there an undo code? There are ways that you can stop statements from executing fully and writing to the database until you're ready to, to um, you can create sort of like a, like, sort of like a, a transaction. You can, you can create a transaction and then only commit it when you're ready. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to talk about syntax. But yes, there are, there are ways. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> All right. So enough talk from me. Um, I've thrown a lot at you. So let's explore actually setting up our own SQL environment so that um, you can practice writing your own queries against your own data and have an environment that you could use as a backend for an app if you so choose. Yeah. One million rows affected. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Y'all are funny. Okay. So there are lots of different choices for storing SQL data um, in the cloud or in, you know, it's sort of like we do for MongoDB. You, there's so many cloud-based solutions out there about where you can put your data. Um, I think Supabase is a good option. It has a free tier. Um, and it's, I found it very easy to set up. Um, I'll be curious how you guys feel about it when you get in there, but we're going to walk through that. We're going to set up a very simple table and then we're going to write some simple queries against that simple table. So I'm just going to show you how that setup looks and then how we can query our data. <laughs> we got that super base. Indeed we do. So when you're ready and also too, you don't have to code along if you don't want to, if you just want to sit and watch what's going on and get a feel for it first and then come back and watch this later and build it later. 
absolutely welcome to do that. It'll be on Twitch. You can rewind and try this later if you prefer. So if you want to, you can head on over to supabase.com. And I'm going to do that as well. I guess I got to minimize this. Oops. All right. Let's see. I'm going to head back to superbase.com here. Um, so when you go to superbase.com, um, you'll kind of see this home screen here. It's probably pretty small, right? There, make that bigger for you. <laughs> Yeah, and if you have, if you if you're familiar with SQL already, and you have your preferred storage solution that you want to use instead, go for it. This is just an op. This is just an option that I found that has a free tier. It's easy to set up. Um, so what you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and go to start your project. And once I click it, it takes me straight to a project that I've already set up. However, what you'll probably ask to do is to sign in. And you'll need to sign in with GitHub. So it'll ask you to sign in with GitHub. And if you're not sure how to do it, there's literally a video. I'm going to go back real quick here. There's literally, this video here on the homepage walks you through all the steps for getting started. So you can watch this. You can watch the video on YouTube. There's a link you can click right here. Uh, in the lower right corner of the video, you can watch it on YouTube. It's about a minute long. Um, it'll get you set up with creating a new project. And so let me know once you all sign in and just create your project. You can call it whatever you want. I've called mine to do demo. And then once you've, once you've signed in and just created your project, then I'll show you how we can create a table. Sign in, yay. <laughs> I'm going to hydrate while y'all are doing that. Yeah, like I said, the, the, the basic setup video is literally on their homepage, which I thought was a great touch. Um, yay, it was easy. Yeah, it's so easy, right? It's ridiculous. Yeah. All right, I'm seeing folks saying they're ready. Several folks are saying they're ready. All right, so I've created my project. I'm going to go ahead and go into my project. And mine is showing some, mine is showing me some uh, database statistics just because I've already been messing with this. Yours won't, probably won't show anything here. <laughs> this is super cool. Good. I'm glad, Silver Queen. Yeah, I think you'll find it's maybe a little bit easier than you think it might be. I think personally, okay, I think it's easier than MongoDB to set up, but... It's taken a minute. Yeah. Give it a minute. It, it, I think when you first initialize a new project, it's going to take a minute to spin it up for you. It'll tell you when it's ready. Yeah. And it even has dark mode, right? MongoDB doesn't have dark mode, but Superbase does. <laughs> no, you don't have to. And I'll, I'll, yeah. So you don't have to install anything. We're doing this in the cloud, baby. You're not installing nothing. Believe me, I tried to install Postgres like on my local machine and I was like, no, I ain't doing this on stream. It's way too hard. Superbase is easy. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing We're not installing nothing. We're doing, we're doing free cloud-based mama jama right here. Yeah. Yeah, anything's easier when you have dark mode. Exactly. All right, so I'm seeing that folks are kind of getting in. Um... Ready, ready, ready. Okay, good stuff. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you're going to crash, crash super base, but hey, I've been wrong before. All right. So when you're ready, once your project is initialized, you can go just go to this little table editor here. There was an error loading the usage details of your project. That's fine. Nothing that nothing is wrong. That's just no, you don't have a project yet. You, you don't have anything. So that means your project is re you're ready to start adding things to your project. So click on the table editor. <laughs> click on the table editor. Uh, failed to create organization unauthorized. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, 
I guess make sure that the organization name that you chose is not like a real organization. You'll want to make sure that you're picking you're um, picking just something like a random string like that's related to your maybe your name or something like that. Yeah, or refresh the page. Yeah, when in doubt, try refreshing the page, right? That usually works. Yeah, so some people are saying they got the error, just reload the page and then see if it works then. Yeah. Refreshing, people are saying refresh, refresh, refresh. Yeah. Yeah, and with 700 people hitting it literally all at once, that might be causing some, uh, some slight uh, delays. <laughs> We're, we're really testing their server integrity here. <laughs> good. All right. Good. I'm glad it's going away after reloading. Okay. 100 devs hug a doom. Indeed. Absolutely. Okay. So like I said before, like I said before, um, the one of the main differences between a NoSQL database and a relational database such as um, this one is that you set your columns and your data types at the table level. So rather than creating a schema in your app, you actually sort of declare everything beforehand and then you write to it later on. So what are we going to what we're going to do is you're going to go ahead and create a new table. So you don't have to change the schema or anything like that. You just say new table. stress test. Yeah. You'll say new table and you can give it a name, whatever you want. You might call it something like to do's just so you don't get confused when we're writing queries in a minute. Um, you might call it something like to do's. You don't have to put a description if you don't want to. And what I'm going to have you do is uncheck row level security. So create a table name. It can be whatever you want. I would suggest to do's. Um, uncheck row level security. That's something we're not going to talk about at the moment. It's something that you can make use of, but just we're not going to talk about it right now. Um, and I'm going to make this a little bit. I'm going to move this over so y'all can see. All right, so uncheck row level security. What is the standard for table names? Uppercase, lowercase? It depends. Um, <laughs> I mean, standard is generally, um, you're going to see generally a lot of uppercase, you know, that's kind of the classic SQL, uh, uppercase with like underscores in it, you know, in between words. If you have a, if you have a multi-word table name, you generally put underscores in between the words because the table name has to be a single unit. Um, <laughs> but, but, but my security, yeah. <laughs> Old school for the win. Yeah. Um, all right. So table name description is optional. Uncheck row level security, just for now. That's something you can experiment with later if you want. Um, now, what we see next is our columns. Like I mentioned, when we first create a new table, you need to set the data types when the table is created. So um, I'm gonna show you my to-dos table. I'm gonna cancel out of this, and I'm gonna show you what my, um, what my to-dos table looks like, the one I previously created. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna edit this. And just show you what those columns look like so you get a feel for it. So this is what my to-dos table looks like. I have a field called ID. It's an integer. That's okay, if you have no idea what's happening, no worries. You can just observe for now, you don't have to follow along and then when, you, when you're ready, you can come back and watch this again. Can you augment a table and its properties later? Yes, you absolutely can. Yeah, we're just setting the structure now that you'll be writing to. You can add columns later on if you would like to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is what my to-dos table looks like. I've got an ID with a type of integer. Integer is what? What is an integer? Anybody know what an integer is? Yeah, it's a number, right? Exactly. It's just a number. That's all it means. It's just a whole number. Yeah. Integer. And then for default value, I just have nothing there. And what that's going to do 
is that it's going to auto generate that ID for me, just like in MongoDB. So in MongoDB, when you add a new document to a collection, right, it auto generates an ID for you. And so that's what this is going to do because I have it marked as my primary key. So this is going to be a unique ID for every single item in my table. Why would we want to have a default value for the ID? It's just an option. You can have default values for any of these fields in your table. The columns are in rows. That's confusing. I know. It'll Just bear with me for now. You can feel free to copy this exact structure if you would like to. And then we're going to look at the table as a table once we've created it. And then we can start writing queries on it. <laughs> All right. And then my next one is just created at. That's a timestamp. And I have a default value of now, so it'll automatically populate the timestamp for me. If I was building out a Mongo schema, I would do the same thing, right? I would say, all right, I want to timestamp this. And I would just say, all right, for the timestamp fields, for the, for the created app field, just put a default value of whatever, like now or today. Um, yeah. Next is task title. That's text. I have task description, which is also text. And then I have completed which is a type Boolean and false. Okay. There's all sorts of different data types. Yeah, if you, if you click on any of these, you can see the different data types that are available. We're keeping things simple. We're keeping things chilly, chill, chill, right? We're not getting too crazy here. So just, just for, this is for illustrative purposes only. You can absolutely mess around with data types as much as you would like to once you've created your table. Um, Noop asks, how would you link columns from one table to another? Those are called joins. We may or may not get into that this evening. Um, but if you look at the slides later on, you'll see that there's some information about joins in the slides. We may or may not cover that this evening. Yeah. All right. So I've created my table. Once you've created your table, I think you'll, there'll probably be a green button down in the corner. You can just click um, save. And this is what your table will look like, or something similar, depending on which fields you've added. Yours won't have any data in it yet. Mine does. I'm just showing you what that data looks like. So this is what, what a populated table might look like based on the data types that we saw earlier. So. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller again so it's not behind my head. Just, there we go. All right, so again, you can see I have my IDs, which are all unique, unique IDs, just like in MongoDB. I have my timestamps when I created these, these items. I have my task titles, task descriptions, and completed, which is true or false. <laughs> All right, so your, your table, like I said, your table isn't going to have anything in it, right? Because you just created it. So let's see how we can interact with the table and add a row to it and then query data back from the table to see what you did. So you should have created your table and you'll have your column headers up top. Have you all done that? Have you all created, have you all created your table? And you, you should just see like, you know, your column headers up top with no rows in it at the moment. Yep. Okay. I'm seeing some yelps there. And again, if you're not feeling comfortable, feel free to just observe for now and then come back and try this later when you feel ready for it. All right, good. So once you're ready, Go over in the menu bar on the left and click on SQL Editor. This is where we're actually going to get to try writing some SQL. Yeah, and then once you've written some SQL, yeah, I mean, you've done it, right? You've written SQL. So I have some stuff populated in here already. Um, just this is I just have some notes up top here that are reminding us of the structure of a SQL statement. So we're going to follow these four questions that I have up top here in order to write a create statement to add to our SQL table. 
<laughs> All right. So remember, creating is going to add something to our table, and that's what you want to do. So let's figure out how to write a create statement by answering these four questions. All right. So if I want to add something to a table, what CRUD operation do I want to perform? Do I want to do an insert, a select, an update, or a delete? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. And if you're wondering, so you've clicked on the SQL editor, you'll need to click on new query in order to get the, get this same type of screen. So click on new query, it'll just create a new query for you. And yeah, there you go. So yes, you'll be doing an insert, exactly. Yeah, you'll, we'll be doing an insert. Okay, and I'm going to, and I want to insert into my table, right? So in this case, my table, I'm going to go back to the table editor real quick. My table is called to do's the table that I created. Its name is to do's. So I'm going to say insert into to do's. Right. We're, we're answering the second question here. What table should it come from or what table do I want to interact with? I want to interact with the to do tables. So I'm inserting into to do's. And what columns do I want to affect? Well, <laughs> yeah, and these, these, these dash dashes here, these are just comments. These are things that are just commented out so they aren't gonna get run when I run the query. Um, SQL uses dash dash. Um, all right, insert into dedos. So in my case, I made several of these fields default fields. So what happens when I insert something into this table is the ID is auto-generated. The timestamp is also auto-generated and the uh, completed flag is auto-generated. So real quick, I'm just going to look at my table editor again here. The ID is going to be auto-generated. The timestamp is going to have a default value of now, and the completed flag is going to have a default value of false. So really, the only two things I want to uh, actually insert are the task title and the description. Yeah, as, as, as BSL said, I'm just going to insert the task title and the task description, and everything else will populate itself. How does SQL talk to JavaScript? Well, we're going to learn that toward the end of class today. I'm going to show you how to do these same types of queries from your JavaScript app. All right. There's other, yeah, you can pay, you can place, you can paste a lot of things in here where I'm just using now for simplicity. It's just saying, all right, put, put, put the current date time in this field. So what this is telling me is that I have default values. I'm going to have default values in ID created at and completed. And I'm only going to insert task title and task description. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my SQL query. Insert into to do's. What columns do I want to affect? Task title and task description. You can see it's doing a little bit of autocomplete for me there. It knows that I am talking to the to do table and it knows what columns are in that table. So it was helping me while I was typing. Yeah. All right. So insert into to do's task title and task description. Now, what, what do I want those values to be? I can just say insert into to do's values and then whatever those values are. So I'm going to say, what should I say? Um, ta what, should, uh, what, what tasks should I have here? Task. I need a title, title and description. Learn SQL. All right. <laughs> Feet by shoes, walk the dog, Anki. Oh, Anki, that's a good one. All right, Anki, yeah. Hint, hint, Anki. And then uh, um, practice SQL syntax. All right, so I'm going to insert into to do's a task title and this task description with values of Anki and practice SQL syntax. So um, <laughs> push to get home. Yeah. Snuggle kittens. That's always a good one. All right. 
So let's go ahead and run this. And you can run things by clicking on the run button over on the right hand side or hitting control enter. So let's see what happens when I do this. All right, it says success. Can we use double quotes as well? Um, I do believe that you'll have to use single quotes in this case. That's a good question. Um, but yeah, you'll want to use single quotes. You'll see that it's valid if you if it turns that green kind of minty green color. Yeah. Yeah, you'll find that SQL is not as flexible as JavaScript in the way you write things. Um, all right. So if it, if it worked, you should see success, no rows returned. Um, now, what if I want to see how that looks now? What if I want to see how that looks? What might I do? Let's write another statement that will that will query my table and see what I just wrote. Yeah, so I'm going to want to do a select, right? I'm going to want to do a select and let's just get everything from the table. So y'all are saying it, I'm going to do select star from to do's. Okay. Now I'm just going to highlight this one line and only run the one line. If you sim similar to JavaScript, you can, you can select the, you know, I can highlight the, the line that I want to run and I can just run that line. So I'm going to highlight this and you can either hit control enter or click the run button and let's see what we got. Won't the initial insert run? No, it won't run unless you, so, so if you just, if I just clicked run, everything would run. Um, what you could do is you could also, you could comment this out and then run it. Or you can just highlight the line that you want to run and run it that way. Yeah. Uh, so some folks are getting errors. Syntax error. Okay, so um, if you tried to run both at once, you'll get an error unless you put a semicolon at the end of your first SQL statement. So if you try to run multiple statements at the same time, so try to run an insert followed by a select, you will get an error unless you have a semicolon at the end of your first statement, just to tell it when the first one ends and the second one begins. So yeah, proper syntax here would be to put a semicolon at the end of the first statement, and that will tell that will that will tell Superbase that they're two separate statements. Yeah. So if you're getting something like task description doesn't exist, then you probably don't have a field in your table named task description. Yeah. So make sure your field names can be whatever matches it, the, your field names need to be whatever is actually in your table. Mandatory semicolons. Yeah, again, SQL is more strict. SQL is more strict than um, JavaScript as far as how you write things. You now have two of the same entry. That's okay. We're going to learn how to delete rows here in a minute. Yeah, and if you, if you want to change your table name, I believe if you go back to the table editor, um, you should be able to click, there's, there's a little down arrow next to the table name and you should be able to edit it and um, change your field names there. Yeah, should be able to say edit table and then rename it there. So if, you, if, you're, say, if you're getting something like um, to do's does not exist, well, make sure that you're actually, that's your actual table name. So your, your table name needs to be to do's. Um, if you've named your table something different, then change it to whatever your table name is. Uh, Fail to run SQL query, no value in column ID of relation to do to do list. So that means that your ID value is um, not auto-populating. 
Um, so that's fine. You can insert an ID value as well. Um, you could just say, if, that, if that's not working, if it's saying ID value is null, um, you could always just say ID, comma, task title, comma, task description, and then add an ID value. So like just add a number one, Anki practice SQL syntax. So you could do that as well. Uh, and people are saying, I noticed I had to use quotations for to do's. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure why, but, um, oh, good. It worked. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. It, um, if, if some of you may have capitalized your table name, uh, if you put a capital letters. Yeah, I'm going to take, so I'm going to take the ID value out. Mine is auto populating, but um, if you're having issues with that ID value not populating, you can always just add it in as an additional field, pass it in. Uh, yeah. If you use the capital letter, in your table name, you may have to put it in quotes. Yep. And how you can run things without clicking on run is by hitting control enter. So if you see here down below, it says click run or hit control enter to execute your query. If you're on Mac, that may be command enter. Yay, inserted. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Good job. So you've inserted a row and you can see that row by running your select statement. Got it to run, yay! If you didn't get it to run, that's perfectly fine. Um, you can always come back to it later or um, you can always um, just observe, you know, for now and get a, get a feel for the syntax and then, you know, come back and try it again later. Yeah. So in the SQL editor, if you're wondering how to start a new query, there should be a button up top here. Yeah, and you'll need to, but you'll need to create your table first before you can run queries on it. Yep, that's a requirement for SQL. You create the table first and then you can write queries. Oh, good stuff, okay. Yeah. So you can add additional records if you would like to. So however, if, if the first record worked, you can always, what I would do for now, what I would do for now, instead of trying to do mass updates or, or mass inserts or anything like that, just take your first insert statement and copy and paste it and just add another one. So say something like um, pet kittens and um, give, them scritches. There you go. So I'm going to add this one as well. <laughs> Tried to rush ahead to delete. No bueno. Patience is a virtue. Yeah. So now I've inserted two rows. And if you're having issues where it's not running the way you would expect, just, or if it's rerunning your previous statement, just comment out that previous statement. And you can do that with a dash dash. So just type dash dash, that will comment it out so it doesn't run. If you're worried about that, if you're like, I don't want this to run again, just comment out what you don't want anymore. And then only run what you want. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do another select here. And now that you've added a couple of rows, you should be able to run your select statement and see what's in your table. So it, it'll either be one or two rows, depending on what you've added. Uh, is this comment syntax part of SQL or part of Postgres? It's part of SQL in general. Um, so dash dash is gonna help you comment out a single line in SQL, kind of like slash slash in JavaScript, right? JavaScript does the slash slash thing. Um, SQL does dash dash for single lines. Yeah. Oh, we got a hydrate, okay. Um, Zena says, I deleted the statement. Is that okay? Or is it best to leave completed statements? I like to leave my completed statements in case I need to copy and paste them, but you can do whatever you want.
<laughs> you have too many lines. That's okay. We're not, don't worry. I'm going to teach you how to delete stuff in a little bit. Yeah, it is very clean, right? It looks like, it reads like a sentence. If I read this, I can pretty much tell what it's doing. There's no ambiguity, ambiguity here. I'm just saying, all right, insert these values into this table and then select it. <laughs> Speaking of mugs, yeah, exactly. Um, yes, we are due for a for both a break and another raffle. Um, so I think you know we've we've inserted a couple rows. We've done a select so that you can see those rows. Were you all able to do your select statement and then see the rows that you inserted? I'm just trying to gauge where people are at. Were you able to insert a couple rows, at least one? Good, good, good. And then do that select and see what you inserted. Awesome. You're halfway there. That's all right. All right. Hang on. Let's pause for a second. If we're talking crud, you've done the first two letters in crud. You have done create and you have done read. We're halfway through crud. All right. That, that looks pretty good. <laughs> Sequel, hey, that's what I did. I, I, I ain't going to lie to you. That's what I did at, at, at the point when I put SQL on my resume, I'd only ever done select statements like select star from, uh, uh, yeah. So <laughs> you got three, two repeats. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, select using the cursor and run only works in this environment or it's, it's pretty universal across most SQL clients. You can select a line and only run that line. Yeah. All right. So, we're going to do a raffle. And then when we come back from break, we're going to do a little bit more of the R in CRUD. I'm going to teach you how to um, be a little bit more um, discerning about the data that you return from that select statement. So you don't have to return everything every time. You can get certain columns. You can get certain rows. You can get certain rows and columns. Um, but th that's very easy to do. We're going to answer those last two questions in, you know, we have four questions up here. What crowd operation do you want to perform? What table should it come from? What columns do you want to affect? And what row filters do you want to apply? When we come back from break, we're going to learn how to answer these last two questions in our select statement. Um, and then we'll learn how to update and delete rows as well. All right. But first, real quick, let's do, um, well, actually, let's take our break first. And then when we come back from break, we'll do another raffle to thank you all for, for absorbing this new knowledge. I know this last hour was a little bit tougher than the first one. So to thank you all for uh, absorbing this knowledge, when we come back from break, we're gonna do a raffle of another mug, then we'll get back into the rest of CRUD. And then at the very end of stream, we will uh, raffle off a tote bag as well. I was able to add a new line, but I had to comment out my initial insert line. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it may be that you didn't have a semicolon at the end of your line. Um, that, that could be, but yeah, in general, it's probably good practice to comment out your previous statement before you run the next one. So, all right. So five minutes on the clock, get up, get up, go do stuff. Remember, you are learning a brand new language. It's gonna be a little bit weird. It's gonna be a little bit frustrating. You're not gonna fully understand what you're doing. That's okay. It's fine, you're doing great. Um, you're halfway through crud already. We just need to do the U and the D in crud. We need to do the UD in crud. And then you will be fully fledged basic SQL writer. All right. Starting the timer. Get up, stretch, get some water. I know I am going to get some water. I am out of hydration right here. So see you back in five. Hey, what's up, Coding with Strangers? Good to see you, my friend. Stick around.
All right, folks, we got about a minute left in the break. I'm back. I'm hydrated. Good to see you all. Still hanging around. After the break is over, I want to reward you all with another raffle. <laughs> Thank you, Coding with Strangers. Uh, Layer Cake says, why does auto-generated ID not start at two and not one? It should start at one. It may be that you had an insert statement that didn't work the first time. And so it just kind of threw out that first ID and went on to ID two. The ID value doesn't really matter. It's just a unique ID value that identifies the ro that row in the table. All right, folks, refill your water cup. Do a wrist stretch, do a neck stretch, and then come on back and we will have a raffle. I see folks asking about where this video will be put. Um, it'll stay on Twitch for 60 days. You can watch it on Twitch right here on my channel. Or eventually, <laughs> I'm a little behind, but I promise I'll catch up. I do move things to my YouTube channel. So if you want to watch me on YouTube, you're welcome to do that. Um, you can do exclamation point YouTube in chat. Do exclamation point YouTube in chat for a link to my YouTube channel where you'll find a lot of older streams. Did I, <laughs> Tori says, did I finish the Kanban board? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we built we built our Kanban board on my on my last stream. If you're interested in, in doing JavaScript projects, we, we built a, a, a beautiful Kanban board in vanilla JavaScript. You can find that on my GitHub, which is exclamation point GitHub in chat. Um, or you can just watch the stream. That would be my preference. <laughs> New mug. Yeah. All of my water glasses are in the dishwasher, apparently. So you get uh, cute kitty cat mug. This is not what I'm raffling off, unfortunately. I love this mug. Um, but you, what I'm just about to raffle off here is a beautiful uh, 100 devs fund the agency um, mug. So let me get that set up here for you. All right. First off, I need to make sure that I've noted down the person that won the first one. So one second. Make sure I get them down. Uh, yes, Jardo J, you won the first one and you want a mug. Yep. Yes. All right. So let me get this reset here. Hang on. All right, the giveaway is now open. You can type exclamation point raffle in chat. Yeah, one entry per person. You only get one entry. So no matter how many times you type it, you'll only get one entry. All right, entries are ticking up. Woohoo! Now there's fewer people in the stream now than there than there were the first time around. So you have a slightly better chance of getting that mug. If you stick around to the end, you'll even have an even better chance of getting a tote bag. Now I don't know what the tote bag looks like, um, but I would imagine it's pretty dope knowing Leon. All right, we'll leave that open for three more minutes until 8.45 or um, whatever 45 in your time zone. So don't worry, you've got plenty of time. You've got a good three minutes to get entered. So go ahead and put your name in there. <laughs> can you toast put things in it? Yes, you can. All right. Yeah, we're ticking up. We're going. We're moving. Thank you all for entering. <laughs> good luck to everybody. Yep. All right. So three more minutes on that. Um, I'll let you know as soon as it's closed. Oh, we got another hydrate there. Okay. I will never say no to a hydrate. 
I don't, uh, I tend to not drink enough water. So yeah, that's, uh, that's actually helpful to me. Okay. While y'all are entering that, getting almost as many entries this time as I did the first raffle, which is amazing. All right. <laughs> okay, so what did we do before the break? Well, before the break, we looked at the first two. Um, in CRUD, we looked at the C and the R. So we looked at the create and the read. We learned how to insert a row into our database. And then we learned how to select and read back the row or rows in our table. However, let's say that I want to read my, I want to read from my table, but I don't want to see everything because I don't always want to see everything. What if my table, what if my table had 200 rows in it or 2000 or 2 million every day at work? I work with tables that are two, three, four, 16 million rows. If I did a select star on that, that would tell me nothing. I, I, I would say, all right, fine. Yeah, 16 million rows. I can't look at all that. I only want to see, I only want to see certain columns or maybe rows that meet certain criteria. So I can refine this select statement a little bit. So I'm going to take this select statement. And I'm just going to move it down here below this little read header right here. So I've got my create statements written up here. I've got my read statement, select star from to do's. So let's say, yeah, I don't want to see everything. Maybe I only want to see things where this completed flag here, this completed flag is equal to, let's say false. I don't care about the things I've already checked off. I only want to see things where completed equals false. So in order to do that, I can simply add what we call a where clause, a where clause. So this is what this is going to do is it's going to put a filter. It's going to put a filter on the results that I get back. Yeah, it's a werewolf. <laughs> All right. So select star from to do's where completed, that's my column name, equals false. It's as easy as that. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Select star from to do's where completed equals false. Yes, and it can be on multiple lines, uh huh, or you can put it on a single line. If you're more comfortable like this, that's absolutely fine. You can do it like this if you prefer. So let's run that. Aha, now look what I get back. I only get back the rows where completed equals false. Yeah, and you could choose a different field. If all your to-dos are false, if that's your default, uh, if that's your default field, choose a different one. You could say, let's, let's try something different. Let's say select star from to-dos where task title equals walk dog, where, and it's, it's just the same task title. You can see it's even giving me the title. It's giving me the column name. I can click on it where task title equals, remember single quotes, walk dog, run that. What do I get? I get that record. You could also do a select, as some folks are saying, you could also do a select on the ID as well. Yeah. Yeah. Select star from to do's where task title equals ID, walk dog. Select star from to do's where task, where uh, ID equals, uh, I don't know, two. Um, and remember, ID is not a string. ID is a number in this case. So I just type the number two and I get the second task. Yeah. Does the request end with the semicolon? Yes. So that's that, that can be a way, if you have multi-line um, select statements, that can be a way that you can end them. Um, if you have more than one on your page, then yeah, you're gonna have, um, 
you're going to want to have your semicolons at the end of each statement. It's probably best practice to end your statements with semicolons. I'm pretty bad about that, but in this case, do as I say, not as I do. Um, yeah, you can go ahead and end just, if you get in the habit of ending your statements with semicolons, you'll be a happier camper. Yep. Um, and you can, it doesn't, you don't have to use an equal sign. So some people are saying, how could I select more than one ID at once? Uh, well, I could say, all right, so let's say I wanted um, all the IDs that were greater than two. So I could do that. Select star from to do is where ID is greater than two. Let's run that. I get every ID that's greater than two. So all of the, the, those types of um, you know, comparisons that you would do in JavaScript, those are valid. Um, I saw somebody asked earlier about, do I just use a single equal sign? Yes. So in SQL, that's it. And I love that question. I did not, I didn't even think of that. And I really appreciate it. I'm glad that you asked that. Um, yes. When you're, when you're denoting equality, when you're checking equality in SQL, you're going to just use the single equal sign. Select star from to do's where ID equals two, and that will return anything with an ID equal to two, in this case, a single row. Yeah, fantastic question. Yeah. All right, let us uh, let me close the raffle. I got to talking, but I think, we're, I think we've, we, we've pretty much wrapped up here. So let's go ahead and draw a name. I'm gonna close it. Raffle is closed. I'm gonna draw a name. Oh, I'm sorry, Vad, I think you're a bit too late. Um, but don't worry, there'll be another raffle at the end of the stream. All right, so I'm going to announce in chat who won. It was All Rob 45. All Rob 45. Congratulations to you, All Rob. You have won a mug. <laughs> All right. Congrats, All Rob. I'm going to put your name here on in my little notes. And I'm gonna give these names to Leon and Leon will be in charge of uh, mailing these items out to you and getting into contact with you. So um, expect something from, uh, you'll expect to hear from Leon. Yeah. I expect you might get a whisper on Twitch um, asking for some information in order to get, you know, get things sent out to you. Yeah, good job. Okay, and yeah, folks are asking a lot of great questions about how to structure these types of queries. And the cool thing is, now that you understand like how, what a select statement is, you can explore, you can explore um, the different ways you can write one, the different ways you can select, the different ways you can filter down those rows, right? Yes, and you can also consider multiple things at once. So um, I would, if I wanted to say, all right, where um, ID is greater than two and completed equals false, I could do that. So if I want to have more than one condition, completed is true, completed is false, either one, yeah. If I wanted to have more than one condition, again, we're just writing plain English here. This is so, this is, it's, we're writing an English sentence. We're writing a sentence to tell the database what we want. And in this case, I want to select everything from to-dos where ID is greater than two and completed equals false. There we go. And both conditions are met. Does C will have loops? Yes, it does. Yeah, it has a lot of the classic programming paradigms. Um, we're not going to get into that this evening, but yes, you can do a lot of those types of things. It, ha it has case statements and, you know, if else type things. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it's not, uh, you can take the spaces out if you prefer. Yeah. You could do it like this without spaces. Um, it will work. And some of this stuff, you know, just try it, experiment, see if it works, see if it doesn't. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I said case statements, I meant switch statements. I apologize, yeah. Um, they're called case statements, at least in in the SQL that I've worked with, they're called case statements, but they're switch statements, yeah. 
Yes. And so the next logical question here is, all right, that's all well and good. I can get all these columns at once and have these row filters to only get the rows that I actually want. Um, but what if I only want certain columns? What I don't care. I don't want the, I don't want to see this ID value. Uh, I don't care about the created timestamp. Like I only want, I really only want to see the task title and the task description for completed tasks, right? I, I, I only want to, I, I, I want to still filter on the fact that these tasks are completed and the ID is greater than two, but I really only want to see the task title and task description. And this starts to become important when you're building apps off of this type of data, right? You don't always necessarily want to return everything, especially if you have a very large table with a lot of columns, you might only want a couple of certain fields that you want to then show to the user, right, in your app. You might only want to see, show them the task title and task description. So you can do that. Instead of the star, instead of the star, you would simply modify this to say select task title, comma, task description. Select task title, comma, task description from to do's where ID greater than two and completed equals false. So let's see what we get if we run this. Ta da! <laughs> I only get those two, those two values with the same filter still applied. And now we're actually answering all four of our questions up above. We're saying, all right, what operation do I want to do? I want to select. What table should it come from? It should come from to-dos. What columns do I want to interact with? I want to interact with task title and task description. What filters do I want to apply? I want to apply filters where ID is greater than two and completed equals false. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's control F on steroids. Now you're starting to see, right? Think about what if my table, what if my table had 2 million rows? I could still, what if I had 2 million to do's in this table? I could still write this exact statement and it would do the exact same thing. It would give me all the rows that meet that criteria. It doesn't care. SQL is extremely good at handling extremely large amounts of data. And as you get into a corporate environment, you're going to encounter the biggest bunches of data you've ever seen in your life, more data than you ever thought existed. And that's just for a single company. So SQL is extremely good at doing this type of thing. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, you can, and that's another great thing about this is you, you're, yeah, you're, you can filter the data before it even makes it to the client, right? You can just only return exactly what you want and then use that in your app. You don't have to pull it first, set, dump it into an array in your app and then filter it down to what you need. No, you can just do a select, only what you need, take that into your app and deliver it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like you're having a conversation with the computer. Exactly. It's very natural because it was designed that way. It's not, it's not a mystery. Um, it was designed to be easy to read, easy to write. Yeah. And you can do things like you can do partial matches. So you can do like wildcard type matches um, on, we're not going to get into that too much, but that is something you can absolutely explore on your own. Supabase has excellent documentation. If you, if you just Google like SQL, how to select a partial match or something like that, you'll get answers back and you can try it yourself in the sandbox. Um, and yeah, in Supabase, you can also, if you have some raw data you want to upload and mess with, um, it allows you to upload spreadsheets directly and create a table from that spreadsheet. Um, so if you want to do that, you can. Yeah, it's a legacy language. Friendship ended with MongoDB. Postgres is my best friend now. Yeah, see, it's not that bad, right? It's not a mystery. All right, so we've done the R in CRUD. I would highly suggest that you add some more rows to your table and you know keep messing around with this. Just you're not going to break anything. You're not going to hurt anything. Just Try stuff. Um, 
it just, it's so easy, right? I love it. I love that y'all, this makes me so happy. I love SQL. I work with SQL every single day. Like I said, I've built my career on SQL and I love that you all are seeing the power, the ease, the fluidity of writing these statements. <laughs> Will we learn how to drop tables? Probably not today. Um, I think, but I think, I think in my previous SQL stream, my intro to SQL stream, I think we did that. Um, so hint, hint, if you want to check out my old SQL stream, my, my, the first one that I did, I think we dropped some tables for fun. Um, yeah. All right. So we've done the C in CRUD. We've done the R in CRUD. How about we learn how to do the update and the delete? Can you do math on the return data before it gets to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do mathematical operations. Um, yeah, you can do counts, uh, you know, math on these fields, you can, you know, create a field that does a mathematical equation and then, you know, gives it back to you as a, as a new field in the output. Um, yeah, you can do all those things. <laughs> ah, drop, you thought drop table was delete. No, they're two different things. So when we talk about deletes, what we're talking about is deleting rows. Um, when we talk about drop table, we're talking about chucking an entire table. So those are very different and you need to be careful. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hydrate real quick. Hang on. Yeah, it is on YouTube. Um, and so while we're, while we're talking about it, so I don't forget, I'm going to share the link. I, I knew this was coming. I knew y'all would be asking about it. Um, so that's the, that's the video of my previous SQL stream. This it's you know, similar, but a little different. It doesn't have a super base component. Um, we just use an online sandbox in that previous stream. But so bookmark that it, we talk about some more stuff too. So you get a slightly different look, another perspective, you know, in, in, in teaching you more about how to do these types of queries. So posture check. Thank you. All right. Let's do the updates and the deletes. I can tell y'all are picking it up. Y'all are getting the vibe. So let's learn how to update some existing data that's already in the table. Okay. So I'm going to comment out my select statement here and I'm going to go down to my little update um, section and <laughs> update and delete. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So this is going to have a similar look to our previous statements. We're again, we're going to be answering the same four questions. So what CRUD operation do I want to perform? I want to update what table, Am I affecting? I am touching the to do's table. Update to do's. All right. Um, now we're going to have slightly different syntax, but it'll make sense. Um, update to do's. I want to set, oops, not sweat. I want to set a value. So there's a value that already exists, and I want to set it to something different. Um, so I'm going to say, let me just, I'm just going to do a quick select statement here. I want to re remind myself of what's in my table. So select star, oops, not that, sorry, select star from to do's. All right. I, let's say I want to mark a task completed. So this first task here, number two, I want to change that from true to false. Oh, thank you for the cheers. Sisdy. <laughs> Sisty, yeah. Um, uh, so Stinker10, if it's putting your table names in double quotes, do you have capital letters in your table names by any chance? Um, so yeah, so let's say I want to change this first task, ID2, want to change that from true to false. All right, so I'm going to say update to do's, set completed, equals false. Now this is where I answer the, so I'm answering the question. Um, what basically I'm saying, all right, what, uh, columns do I want to affect? Well, I want to, I want to set completed equals false. Now what would happen if I just ran this like, like this, what do y'all think would happen? Because we haven't answered the fourth question yet, right? 
We haven't said what row filled in, but what if I just had only answered these first three questions and then I just ran this statement? Yeah. <laughs> it was, since we didn't apply any row filters, it would set everything to false. Yeah. Yeah. And you can try that for funsies if you want. You're not going to hurt anything. But this is the power. With great power comes great responsibility. And if I had a table with 2 million rows in it and I did this, it would update everything to false. No questions asked. Yeah, do it in production, right? Yeah, you can, you can do a lot of damage if you're not careful. So just remember, add your where clause. Yeah. Update to do's, set completed equals false. I'm going to say where ID equals two. That's an easy one to do. All right. So I'm going to do that. Run it. Okay. And then I'm going to run my select statement again so I can see what happened. Okay, so now the task with ID2 has been set from true to false, but it didn't touch any of the other ones, right? These are all the same as they were. However, ID2 task has been set to false. First choice. Yeah, oh, imposter check, thank you. <laughs> Water club, yeah. Why did it move to the bottom? That's an excellent question. I was hoping somebody would ask. Why did it move to the bottom? So, when you're running these, when you're running a select against the database, it's just grabbing everything and returning it back to you. It, it by default, it's not going to care. It's not going to care what order it pulls that stuff back in. It might be a random order every single time. However, however, oh, I'm yeah, I'm going to comment out my update statement. We already ran it. Um, however. We, there's an app for that. There's a, there's a, there's a keyword for that. It, we don't have to have it put things in random order. We can force it to put things in a certain order. Now, thinking about how easy SQL is to write, how much it is like plain English, I'm going to have you tell me what keyword do you think I would use in order to order things by a certain field? What, what keyword would I need? Order. Yeah. I want to put things in order. I'm going to use the keyword order. It's not, we're not trying to trick you here. So select star from to use order by, let's order by ID. That's easy. Run that. Oh, hey. <laughs> it put things in order. <laughs> How easy is that? Right? Is there, there's no tricks here, right? If this was written in the 70s for people who had never even seen a computer, much, much else used one, right? So they wanted things to be easy to read, easy to write. Therefore, it is easy. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's not hard. It isn't. It is not hard. There's, there's no, at least in basic SQL, um, you know, there's no, there's no trickery here. There's no weirdness. What if we want reverse order? Well, all right. So these fields right now, by default, when I say order by ID, these fields are in ascending order, right? These are in ascending order. So what if I wanted to sort of, what are you just guessing? You know, I'm not going to tell you just guessing what keyword would I use if I wanted to put them in the, in the reverse order ascending. And then the, the reverse of that is yeah descending so there is a little bit of an abbreviation here we can just say descend yeah select star from to do's order by id descending Burp. not hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, and that's a great question too. I, I, excellent questions. The order, the order, is order only temporary? It doesn't permanently sort the table, correct? Yes, it does not. You are not 
when you're doing a select statement, it's just like if you are working with a CRUD operation in your app. When I read something from MongoDB and I, you know, let, let's say I, I, you know, I, I'm pulling data into my app from my database for, from MongoDB database, and um, I'm only, you know, pulling certain data or I'm, or I'm manipulating that data. I'm not, unless I write it back to the database, I'm not affecting anything in the database itself, right? I'm only reading the data. Then I can do whatever I want with that data that I've read. As long as I don't write it back, my database remains the same. I don't affect it. It's just a read operation only. Read only. Right? Like the DOM. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't matter what happens in the DOM. That doesn't affect what happens in your app. Or if I just read data from my database into my app and do stuff with it, my database doesn't care unless I write it back. Yeah. Uh, if you're getting a syntax error when you're trying to update, it might be that you're trying to update a field um, did you, if you were trying to update like a text, a text field, you need to make sure that you put like single quotes around the, the text value. So for example, if I wanted to, um, so this task ID 11 here has a task description of null. Um, let's say I wanted to update that field and add a description there. So I would say, um, update to do's, I'm going to screen this one out, update to do's set task description um, equals, um, let's see, say write better comments. Um, now, again, I need a where clause here, where ID equals 11. Now that should update this field right here, because again, I have filters. So I, I'm saying, all right, I want to affect the task description column where ID equals 11, which is this row right here. So I'm going to be targeting this field. And, but you'll notice the difference between the previous statement I wrote that I wrote and this one is that I had to put quotes around the thing that I was updating because previously I updated a Boolean field, which is just true or false. No quotes. It's a Boolean. However, this is a text field. So I needed to put my update in quotes. <laughs> so that may be what's happening for you there, Blue Dream. Um, it just depends on the data type of the field that you're updating. Because remember, SQL is strict about data types. It does care. Hmm. Yeah, and if you're getting... Remember, best practice would be to add semicolons at the end of your statements. So again, do as I say, not as I do. I'm really bad about that just because I know how to get around it. Um, but you should add semicolons <laughs> to the end of your statements. <laughs> oh, Code Stank, thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate it. Great name. <laughs> and you subbed with Prime, so it didn't cost you anything. Good idea. <laughs> Unlike JS and NoSQL, SQL does care about your types. Yes, it cares about your data types. Absolutely. All right. We've done updates. So feel free to mess with those. Now, somebody asked earlier, what if I did an update and I didn't have a where clause and I updated all the descriptions in my table? Unfortunately, there is no undo. Um, once you write that, once you do that operation, you've done it. Um, so you'll hear horror stories about people including myself, uh, who have accidentally run update statements or delete statements without a where clause. Um, now you can absolutely try that just for funsies and see what it does. Um, so if I do a select here, it's a rite of passage. <laughs> Oopsie doodles. <laughs> Hopefully your employer is having you work in a dev environment. Um, and in which case they should be able to write from, they should be able to do a clone from a higher environment and just replace everything. Um, if your employer is a good employer, they will have you working in dev. And so where you do won't really matter. Um, and, but if you're a not so good employer, like one of my previous employers, you could do something like write an update statement without a where clause in production and then have it start running and only notice when it started, when it was reading down like 19 million rows 
Luckily, I canceled the statement before it actually wrote all 19 million rows. So it's still reading them. There's so many rows to read that it actually made me notice it after a few seconds. Um, and I was able to cancel the transaction. <laughs> but yeah, once it once it writes, I'm afraid you have written it and there ain't no going back. Um, so Triz is, you can make multiple tables if you would like to. Um, you can make, you know, multiple copies of the, of a table and just like, you know, to do one, to do two, to do three. Um, and so if you, if you screw up, you can just, you know, go to the next one. Yeah. How do you cancel it? Uh, you, you can do things in like, you, you can make like transactions. So where it starts a transaction and then it won't finish the transaction until you click a commit button. And then you can do what's called rolling back that transaction if you made a mistake. However, that requires wrapping your statement in a transaction statement. Um, so we're not going to cover that right now. If you want to look more about that, just know that you can. That is something you can do. If you're writing statements that you feel like might not be correct or you want to roll it back, um, you can wrap them in transactions. Some versions of SQL, such as PL SQL, uh, automatically put everything in transactions. Um, it just depends on what type of SQL you're working with. Yeah. Uh, Jan will ask, so is SQL a storage system? So SQL is just another way of interacting with a database. And it's what it's, it was uh, designed for interacting with relational databases. Um, so table-based databases, just like we see here, this is a table. Um, so SQL is not the storage method. SQL is the, is the language that we use to talk to a relational database. Yeah. So if that's something you're interested in, you can definitely research transactions um, and you know see how those work, see how to use them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's learn how to delete stuff. Now that we're getting dangerous, let's learn how to delete stuff. So some of you mentioned earlier, oh my goodness, I accidentally have a duplicate row in my table here. I want to get rid of that row. I want to get rid of that row. And also folks were asking about like, you know, inserting multiple rows, that kind of thing. Yeah, you can do that as well. Um, I would suggest that you just, you know, start with inserting individual rows until you get good at that. And then um, especially from like the, the um, once we start incorporating um, SQL into our JavaScript apps, it's fairly easy to insert multiple rows at once. Um, but let's, let's learn about deletes here. So deletes. All right. So previously when we inserted something, we said insert into to do's. So how do you think I might start a delete statement? If I was just saying this in English, if I was saying in English that I want to take my to do, to do table and I want to delete something from it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, there's no tricks here. Yeah, it's just deletes from to do's. Easy peasy. Delete from to do's. Exactly. Now, what have I been talking about for like the last 15 minutes about what you also need to add? What should my next word be here? What do you think my next word should be? Where exactly? Put a where clause. <laughs> yeah, you all got it. Y'all have caught y'all y'all know what you're y'all know what you're talking about. For the love of God, where? <laughs> where is she? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not gonna run it. If I just ran delete from to do's, yeah, it, it might throw an error. It might ask me if I'm sure. It depends on it really depends on what client, like where you're running these types of statements. Some clients will be like, hold on there, cowboy. Are you sure you want to do that? Are, are you just are you being a dingus here? Did you forget something? Um but some don't. Some are just like, yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> it just depends. <laughs> Rip type 19 million rows. Yeah. All right. So delete from to do's where now I'm going to, let's say I want to delete. Um, oh, here's one. Okay. This is a good one. I want to delete this task number 12 because I didn't put a title in it. I, I'm like, I don't want to update this. It was a mistake. I did it wrong. Um, I just want to delete this one with an ID of 12. So I can say delete from to do where ID equals 12. Notice 
I didn't specify any columns here because with delete statements, you are deleting a row, an entire row. You, there's no way to delete like part of a row. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do it? Did you run a, just a, a wide open delete statement? Okay. Thanks for taking that. Uh, thanks for, for taking that L there, Dev D. All right. You, you know how to write insert statements now, so you can put, you can put your rows back. But if I do this, I like you. I love that y'all are messing around with this though. It's great. And then I'm just going to do another select and I'm going to make sure that ID 12 is now gone. And I'm going to order by ID as well. Comment these out. <laughs> I love that y'all are messing around. It's, uh, I love that. That's the way to learn how to use SQL is just play with it. You're not going to break anything. It's all your data anyway. So whatever, right? Just do it. Okay, so I've ordered by ID. I've ordered by ID. And now I can see that there is nothing between 11 and 13. ID number 12 is gone. Yeah. Uh, so I think you all are wondering about, okay, what if I wanted to delete multiple IDs at once? Um, <laughs> I can insert three more rows for science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Rianne, I'm so happy to hear that. It's very comfortable. Yeah, it's like it's like a friend. SQL is like a friend. Um, and just the thing you need to be careful with in using SQL is that you can get a little, sometimes you can get a little bit too comfortable. You're writing fast, you know exactly what you're trying to do, and then you forget that where clause, right? Um, so how do, I insert, how do I potentially delete multiple IDs? Well, I can say, instead of saying ID equals 12, Instead, I can say ID in, let's see, I want to say, I'm going to say ID in, um, I don't know, 11 comma 13. So this is how, and to be honest, I haven't done this yet in Postgres. This is how I would write it in uh, Oracle SQL. Um, so delete from where ID in, you know, let's see if that works. Yeah. All right. It looks like it works. Post, like I said, I know Oracle SQL. That's what I've been writing in for the last few years. Prior to that, I did Microsoft SQL, but having never used Postgres before, like in a, in any setting, um, I can still understand and write it just fine. All SQL flavors are very similar in their execution. It's only when you start getting into advanced type stuff that you're gonna get differences in the way they run things and operate and all that. But for the kind of stuff that you need to do for basic SQL, you're not really gonna notice any differences. All right, so I'm gonna select, yeah. And now IDs 11 and 13 were both deleted, yeah. So if you want to affect rows based on like uh, rows meeting multiple different criteria in general, what you can use instead of an equal is something like in or greater than or less than. If you're, if you're working with numbers, you can use greater than or less than. Um, if you're working with something like text, um, so I can do, let me do a select, let me do another select here. I'm going to do um, select star from to do's uh, where um, task title in Anki, uh, comma, pet kittens. Run that. And I get the two tasks with a title in Anki and pet kittens. Uh, what is my stream schedule? So right now, my stream schedule, my regular stream schedule is uh, every Sunday. This is a special stream that I'm doing today in support of the 100 Devs uh, Agency campaign, uh, which helps folks get jobs in tech. So this is a special stream that I'm doing today, um, but generally my stream is on Sundays uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, how can you delete all except one? Uh, what I would with delete statements, I tend to be fairly careful. Um, I would probably get the IDs for the ones for specific IDs for the ones that I want to delete, and I would delete them that way. I'm not. I don't like to do delete statements 
like in mass and just say like, you know, delete every, delete everything. I, I would generally get the specific item, specific rows that I want to delete and be very careful about it. Yeah. 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 And there's also um, a, a, like a like keyword. Um, and so if I had, if I wanted to get like a partial match on a title, so if I wanted to say like, all right, get me all tasks that start with a, what I would probably, what I would say instead is something like, um, select star from to do's where task title like, uh, and then I could use wildcards, partial matches, um, to say it's, so, and you don't have to fully understand what I'm doing here, but, um, I would do something like this. So let's see, let's just run this and see what I get. Yeah. So here, what I'm doing is I'm saying, give me any task title that is a partial match and starts with A. Yeah. Where task title starts with A. Yep, absolutely. Starting with A, yeah. And as far as like delete statements go, I don't generally use those. Um, I try to avoid, man, unless, unless absolutely necessary, I try not to delete data. When you're working with real live data, you generally try not to delete it. If possible, if, it, if it's incorrect, you would, would want to try to update that data. You'd use an update statement um, unless you absolutely have to. You know, if you have true duplicate rows, then yeah, you're going to have to delete some rows, in which case I would do that very surgically, only deleting exactly what I need to delete and being very careful about it using unique IDs if possible. Um, and if the data is only slightly wrong, if I need to make a correction to it, I would use an update statement and update the row instead. Uh, and like asks, do you find yourself creating a lot of tables on the job or working with ones that have already been created? I create so many tables. I create tables, multiple tables per week. Yeah, it's part of the job. Not everybody does. Uh, my job specifically, I am just in a role where I build a lot of stuff, um, like a lot of tables from scratch, and then I populate those tables. It, that's my role is I do what's called ETL, um, which is taking data from one source transforming that data and then loading it into a new source so that users can access it. Um, and so that's a, that's a primary function of my job. Um, and so what that involves is creating a crap ton of tables. <laughs> yeah. Extract transform load. Exactly. Oh, it's a great job spider lady. I love my job. Yeah. Okay. Um, so man, we're almost out of time. We didn't get the chance to actually use this, um, in an, app. Um, I actually have an app written. However, um, I, I don't know exactly what the schedule is going to look like. I would love to show you guys how to translate what we've just learned into an actual app. I have an app created. Um, what I might do is dump that app on um, GitHub and then uh, share it with you. And I can also, what I can share with you right now is the Supabase docs, which will walk you through step by step which will walk you to, through step-by-step step, putting Supabase in your app. And then all of the things that we've talked about, all the CRUD operations we've talked about, doing select statements from a table, right? Inserting data into a table. All the things we've talked about updating data with a where clause. All of these things are in the docs and the docs are extremely good. So you're welcome to try this on your own if you'd like to. I'm happy to do a part two if there's interest where we actually build an app with Supabase as our backend. Um, let me share a link to the docs here in chat. And yeah, another thing too, I'm glad that you mentioned that Jazzy Pants. Supabase also allows you to do things like authentication very, very, very easily, much more easily than in MongoDB. You can do authentication, um, multiple tables. Um, another thing I'd love to teach you all about is joins. How do we join multiple tables together in order to get combinations of data from multiple tables in the same query? Um, all right, I'm seeing a lot of interest here. Good, good, good. All right, I'm gonna share a link to the docs. Definitely take a look at these docs. I'm spamming it in chat. <laughs> yeah. Part two Sunday, maybe so, yeah. 
I want to see if Leon wants me to do another like stream during the week or if I should just do this in my Sunday stream. I need to talk to Leon about how I'm going to set this up. But another thing, if you want to learn about joins, which are another great fundamental thing in basic SQL, um, I would suggest you take a look at my previous SQL stream. Uh, I can share the link for that again. And it's also in the slides. So if you have the slides, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to share a link to the slides again. This information about joins is just a little farther along in the slides. Um, actually, I'm yeah, and I won't be streaming this Sunday. That's a great point. I'm not going to be streaming this Sunday. It's Christmas. Um, I'll let you know once I'm back. We might do part two in January. Um, I'm going to be, you know, spending time with family and all that thing. So this will be, um, yeah, my last stream of the week. Um, yeah, Christmas, right? Thank you for that, Trizis. <laughs> but take a look. I'm linking the slides again. Uh, I've linked, so there's two links in the, what I just posted in chat. I've linked the slides and the YouTube video, um, where I talk about joins. Um, so maybe brush up on joins. You can do that yourself. Um, Yes, and we're going to do one more raffle. So don't go away just yet. Don't leave. We're yet, we have one more raffle to do before we wrap up today. Um, but I hope this was a good introduction. I hope I piqued your interest. I hope you can see how SQL is not hard. It is not mysterious. Um, it's fairly easy to set up a whole instance, a, a super base instance for your app. You can set up a table. Um, you can run some queries on that table. And then in January, what we'll do is we'll learn how to then take this table and build an app off of it. Um, and it's it's so easy. It's so easy. Check out the Superbase docs. Um, get a taste for it. See how easy it is. Uh, and you'll be amazed, I think. I, from just coming at this objectively, even though I do have a SQL background, I still think that setting this kind of thing up using Superbase as your back end is even easier than MongoDB. Um, way easier than the command line. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. SQL is my friend. Yeah. Mess around, play around. Um, so also in the slides, if you have the slides, um, there's a link to a sandbox that you can use. If you had trouble setting up your table, if you want to experience with more types of tables, um, there's a sandbox in there from W3 schools. Uh, that we used in my previous SQL stream. Uh, there's a wonderful SQL sandbox. It's got a bunch of tables that are pre-written and you can just write queries on those tables. You don't got to set it up yourself. Um, you can just query the heck out of those tables. Uh, or in Superbase, you can upload spreadsheets and turn those into tables and write queries off of those. So if you have some spreadsheet data that you want to run queries on, upload it into Superbase um, as a table and just query the heck out of it. All right, let's do another raffle. We're going to raffle off a tote bag, a tote bag. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I would assume uh, it's highly attractive. Um, like the other 100 devs merch, I imagine it says something about funding the agency. Um, yeah, definitely. That's what we have the VOD. If you got a little lost in the sauce today, it's OK. It's fine. Um, you can watch this later. It's recorded on Twitch. It will move to YouTube after um, when I get to it, <laughs> I would say by January, I'll be caught up on, uh, getting things to YouTube. That's my bad. Um, <laughs> Fallout 76 canvas bag, uh, or Zaleus. That's a deep cut. I know exactly what you're referencing. That's great. <laughs> All right. Raffle time. Let me get it going. Hang on. Give me two seconds. Don't enter yet. Hang on a hot minute. All right. Raffle is starting in three, two, one. Raffle is open. Enter the giveaway by typing exclamation point raffle. <laughs> oh boy. Get that tote bag. I love the enthusiasm. I got to tell you, I want a, um, I want a hundred devs shirt back when Leon did more like shirts and stuff, merch. Um, and that thing is amazing. Like it's, it's held up in the wash. I, I wear it pretty regularly. It's held up. Um, 
And so, yeah, I mean, Leon, Leon gets good quality merch. So whatever you get, it's going to be quality. Mm. <laughs> or did I buy it? I don't remember if I won it or if I bought it. I might've got quick. I might've been quick enough on the button uh, before it sold out. I no, I think I may have bought it actually. I apologize. But still, it was almost like a raffle because it sold out so quickly. So. <laughs> All right. We're going to keep it open for like another two minutes. Um, entries are slowing down a little bit. So get in there if you want to get in there. Still got a couple. We'll keep it open till um, 35 in whatever time zone you're in. Whatever 35, we're going to keep that open. Ooh. There was a bikini. I did not know that. <laughs> Insert into raffle entries values one. Yeah, you got it. You got it down. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I did not know there was a bikini. That's amazing. I love it. 100 devs flamethrower. Yes, please. All right. So while we're wrapping up this raffle here, um, like I said, expect a part two at some point where we're actually going to learn to translate these um, these statements that we've learned into how do we use them in an app? How do we set up an app and then have it talk to our Superbase database and really do the same thing except in a JavaScript app? Um, it's not as hard as you might think. Um, but yeah, practice. Uh, if you look in the slide deck at the very end of the slide deck, which I will link again, um, at the very end of the slide deck, I have a ton of resources where you can learn more about SQL if you would like to, including a link to the sandbox, um, that W3 School sandbox, where you can just play around and write queries and drop tables and break things um, to your heart's content. And then you can click one button and it's reset everything back to the way it was. So that's one thing that's really nice about the W3 School sandbox is that you can break the heck out of everything. You can drop all the tables. And then you can click a button and reset everything back to normal. <laughs> All right. We got one more minute on the raffle, folks. One more minute. <laughs> Thank you, Rezon. All right. Any last questions? Any last questions before we wrap up and choose a winner on our raffle? I'm glad you all enjoyed the class. I'm feeling you. I'm feeling your enthusiasm. I'm feeling your interest. Um, and I'm so glad that all of you appreciate SQL the way that I do now, or at least get a taste of it. Feel you feel the potential, right? Feel the potential. We're all winners for being here. Aww. <laughs> all right. I think it's time to make a draw, folks. Any special holiday treats I'm excited for? Uh, well, oh, my parents are buying me a new tea kettle for Christmas because mine is broken and I have to heat my water in the microwave currently. So I think that's what I'm excited for is I just need, I, I need my tea kettle. Um, it's, it's been hard, it's been hard days without my, without my kettle. And uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to actually be able to um, heat water in a modern manner. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, in, in a sophisticated manner instead of, you know, that, uh, that disgusting microwave water. All right. I think the entries have slowed down. Oh, we got a couple more coming in. Okay, I'll let you, I'll let you all squeak in, those last couple people. All right. Okay, we're going to close her up. All right. Giveaway is closed. Giveaway is closed. Um, all right, let's draw a name. See who gets that sweet, sweet, sweet tote bag. All right, we've got Um Umarm Umarm seven four seven seven. Umarm four seven seven. You are the recipient of a beautiful and stylish, and I'm sure high quality. Um, 100 devs fund the agency tote bag. Uh, so expect to, I would expect that any and all winners, you'll get a message uh, on Twitch. So keep an eye on that. Um, it'll probably be from Leon. 
uh, or from someone you know associated with 100 devs. Um, I would say likely it's going to be from Leon. I expect a message from Leon um, getting some information about where to send your raffle prize. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so I think let's go ahead and find somebody to raid and we're going to pass this love along to somebody else. I am going to wrap up um, trying to keep things to that three hour time limit. Expect a part two. Um, and we're going to explore how to use this stuff truly full stack. Uh, again, look in the slide deck, look at the end of the slide deck, look at those resources, um, explore SQL, get better, put it now. Uh, hey, now you have done CRUD in SQL. You can write a basic SQL statement. If you're com if you feel comfortable, put that stuff on your resume. That's a resume bullet point now. <laughs> you've learned a new you've new skill unlocked, new resume bullet point unlocked. Yeah, go for it. I mean, the heck, that's what I did. That's how I got into this career. All right. All right, I'm gonna get a raid going here. Yes, and I'll I'll spam the slide link one last time. We didn't get through all the slides, but feel free to read ahead, learn about joins. Um, thank you for the follow there, Nitro Peace. There's a the slide deck. Okay, let me get this raid pulled up and we're gonna spread some love to somebody else in the category. <laughs> Happy holidays to all of you as well. Um, all right, raidy, raid, raid. Okay, we've got some choices. Uh, let's see, Lana Lux, Sam Griffin, Team Bash, Nick Wan, Coda Girl Chin. Uh, how about let's? How about uh, how about Lana Lux? I don't think we've raided them in a while. They are a fantastic and skilled game developer. They are streaming almost every day. They are, they do wonderful work. Um, let's go ahead and see what Lana is up to today. Um, again, they are fantastically talented and they do, they do great work. So let's see what they're doing. Raid is starting. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Um, I, I cannot, I cannot say how much I appreciate your support. It's wonderful. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining me and sharing my love of this wonderful SQL language. All right. I will see you all again in January. Well, actually, no, I'm going to see you all on Thursday on Leon's channel for the sponsored stream, right? Thursday, sponsored stream, Microsoft, support Leon. All right. I'll see you there. And then I will see you in January for part two of our SQL journey together. All righty. Bye-bye.